Are you there, Martha? Are you there? It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Guess what we're going to be talking about? It's Vision Pro time. Ray Maxwell tunes in from Canada. There are some caveats. Jason Snell's got his. He'll leap across the uncanny valley to look at his six-color charts of Apple's quarterly results. So is Alex Lindsay. He's got some really interesting tools to use with the Vision Pro. And then there's poor old Andy Anako who doesn't have anything at all, but he's got some great ideas. Mac Break Weekly, coming up next. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is Twit. Twit. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 907, recording Tuesday, February 6th, 2024. I left my settings app in the garage. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by Babbel, the science-backed language learning app that actually works. Be a better you in 2024 with Babbel. It uses quick 10-minute lessons handcrafted by more than 200 language experts so you can start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. It's created to help you build real-world conversations. And I have to tell you, it's great. It really works. It's easy to learn how to order food, ask for directions, speak to merchants. Babbel's wide range of learning experiences range from casual to intense. So there's always a way to fit in a Babbel session, from self-study apps to podcasts to live classes, talking to other Babbel users. It's so cool. 15 hours with Babbel. That equals about a full semester at college. Plus, all of Babbel's 14 language courses are backed by their 20-day money-back guarantee. I'm a lifetime member, but if you're not yet, here's a special limited-time deal for you. Right now, get 50% off a one-time payment for a lifetime Babbel subscription. 50% off, but only for our listeners. B-A-B-B-E-L, babbel.com slash MacBreak. 50% off your lifetime subscription. I already had one. I wish I'd known about this at babbel.com slash MacBreak. Spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash MacBreak. Rules and restrictions apply. It's time for MacBreak Weekly, the show we cover the latest news from Apple and their... Uh there seems to be something going on <laughs> in the Apple world. <laughs> we brought in the brought in the heavy hitters here. Alex Lindsay from OfficeHours.Global. He has a Vision Pro, but he's not wearing it. You're going to wear it later. What are you going to do? Put it on. If we, we talk about something, and we want to look at something. I'll pop it on. Okay. I felt like there was enough. There was enough. Uh, I There's mean, enough VPing in here to it's, yeah. It, uh, yeah. <laughs> Andy and Akko, he he has no Vision Pro. He's frankly lucky to yeah. have uh, anything. Yeah, well, I, I did. I did decide that like I I don't want to be the only person who you can't actually make eye contact with. So I do have these standing by, Good. in case there's a segment which everybody is wearing Vision Pro except for me. Does or do, actually or actually maybe keep them off because I'd be the only person that like people are relating to as the I want to have a beer as with a this human. guy because yeah. again, yeah. Hi everybody. I'm, I'm wearing I'm, I'm wearing human, my, I'm the best Andy. I could do at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> on short notice and notice no eye contact uh, i'm in my own little <laughs> googly eye world uh jason snell is here in his vision pro and we're seeing his avatar hi jason yeah well you know somebody had to do it so Could i you guess it would be me just say good morning and war eagle just because you look a little I'm like Tim Cook. I'm not going to do that. Okay. <laughs> I I don't think i actually look at all like Tim Cook. I can't i can't put up my scrawny arms. I can only give you my scrawny uh your hot dog fingers scrawny hands yeah yeah uh so uh jason's got it and then we thought we'd bring in uh, somebody who has a lot of experience with vr headsets in general he's even flown drones uh through a uh, first person uh, vr uh long time host uh, on this show uh, on this uh, network of uh, maxwell's house and a uh, color scientist in his own right uh, and a complete geek ray maxwell hello ray hi Hi. <laughs> hello, hello, panel, big panel. Today. He's wearing. Uh, he's what you're going to see on airplanes uh, in the future. Is a is a row after row of people wearing Vision Pro headsets. Well, let me start uh, with you, uh, uh, Jason, since you're actually an avatar and probably aren't going to last <laughs> too too no, I long. I don't think so. I don't um, think so. One segment only, unless I am visiting my mom, in which case this may be what you get from now on. And when I'm traveling, I don't know. You we'll uh, see. Also, also, I can't also, attach my like, good microphone to it. So you sound fine. Also like, like Dr. Strange, it's hard to ma maintain your presence on corporal presence on this mortal plane. So yeah. you could fade out at any moment. Yeah. 
He's gonna. Now, one thing you don't know about this that's actually interesting is um, it uh, it the camera angle is based on where the window is, the zoom window. So if if I move the window, it's like there's a like a crane <laughs> shot is going on, which is pretty wild. Although the background that's doesn't awesome. move, so note to zoom, you gotta you gotta work on that one. But uh, you know, it is it is everything that I expected it to be, which is uncanny and yet also kind of amazing that with a quick capture you're a character in a 3d like a grand theft auto or something like that like the tech is pretty amazing but at the same time it's also a little weird when you're in a facetime with somebody else who's wearing one of these things the context is actually it all kind of starts to feel a little bit better because you hear their voice and you're in the context of it but uh, i mean there's no doubt i would not call my mom with my digital persona that would be weird there's a couple of things. You look a little bit like Bobby Hill from King of the Hill. You look a little bit like Tim Cook. You look like a thumb with your face painted on it. That's part of the problem. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely a depth a depth problem where I, I've been saying it's like a, a a brick. Like there are ears back there, sort of, but really we, yeah. you know, it's a it's a it's a face shape with your with your face put on the front of it. Yeah. Also, hair hair is a problem. You see, we, people who have short hair, they're kind of in there, and that's okay. But like, I Justine had her like hair down, and it's like, no, there's just sort of a charcoal smudge that doesn't really rotate correctly. And also, I, I've heard from a couple of people who say, had I, I was so excited to get this working, I didn't bother to shave, <laughs> I didn't bother to fix my hair, <laughs> and now my avatar is stuck, looking like I've I've just been awake all night waiting <laughs> to sign for you my package. Change. You could do <laughs> a new avatar. Actually, I mean, Mike to be is, fair, yeah, you you you, it's yeah. not stuck in fact that's the that's i think one of the brilliant things about this is if you're somebody who whether it's your haircut or uh getting or primping or putting on makeup or whatever you do your capture then and then that's your face until you yeah. want to recapture it you can't save more than one but that gives you the ability to sort of like be locked in as whoever you want to be and then and then don't take a shower before you're on a podcast <laughs> i uh i was reading earlier before the show and i'll, and I'll refer back to it to uh, ZJ Kingsley on Reddit, who uh, said Apple has mismarketed the Vision Pro and reviewers have, have, as a result, mistakenly focused, for instance, on this avatar thing. They said that's, he said, this is not what it's all about. And I think maybe some people who have it agree. He, he says the, you know, the killer use for him is lying in bed in a VR environment, looking at the stars in crystal clear clarity a small window open talking to a friend via messages and just beyond that mounted in the sky a 100 foot wide screen which had the social network running in simply the clearest quality i've ever seen outside of 1570 imax um you know i think everybody who has this might have a different killer app but what is your experience uh, of watching movies is it crystal clear does it does it oh, look yeah. it is yeah, which it's really clear. It's, it's, yeah, I was kind of it's amazed. It's 4K, I, I lost right? Power. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. And and we, we lost power on Sunday. And of course I have a UPS for my, my router. So I still had internet. I just didn't have any lights. And, um, and so my, my, my retreat was to sit on the couch and put Superman, Man of Steel up and just watch, you know, watch it until the power came back. How up. big did you make and, it? Uh, pro it probably would have been the equivalent of about 150 inches or maybe 200 inches. Like a theater like then, I, like seeing it in oh, the movie? Oh, it's like a theater. It's like, it's hundred percent. Like I, like I would worry if I was a theater looking at this because the, and, and I also would say that, um, I would over the weekend, I got to the point where if I want to hang out with my family, which, you know, I, I, we watch a bunch of shows together. And so that's still, that's still, but you know, um, that's the only time we really all sit down around a TV is when we want to watch a show together and we kind of, you know, that's kind of an evening thing to do. You know, obviously I'm going to still do that with them. But if I was, I, I don't think I would ever again sit down to watch once YouTube TV, which isn't out yet um, for the, for the YouTube headset. says you it's on YouTube. their roadmap, by the way, which is well, YouTube news. TV is not. Yeah. Oh, not YouTube been. TV. It, YouTube is. Yeah. It asks you to put in a number, but there's no, no like, where do, where do I find that number? It says your device will share this number. And I'm like, I don't know where uh, that would be. Yeah. So, so it's not there yet. Um, but as soon as YouTube TV comes on, I, I don't, I don't see myself ever sitting in front of my TV again to just watch a show unless I was eating. Like if I was eating, I don't think I eat with a headset on, but if I was like, um, but I think that I, I very quickly was like, this is a much better experience. Um, I do notice that there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that are different on the headset for viewing things though. One, one is that you're just constantly reminded that 24 is really framey. 
you know, and, and, and that because everything else around it is not, it actually is more apparent that the framiness of, of 24P is probably, this is, these headsets maybe may undermine that. Um, because you want a higher watch, frame rate if you're watching on it, these headsets. The problem is you have an environment right behind it that's moving. So this is, it took me a little while to figure out why it was so much more apparent on the headset than it is on the, when I watch a TV, the wall doesn't move right behind me. When I watch, and, and the wall behind it, the, the environment behind it is working at 90 frames a second or 92 frames a second or whatever. So the the background is at a high frame rate. And because of that, there's something about it that you notice really quickly because there's not a wall there that the frame rate is low. And 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 so the and so I think that it became much more apparent to me that than I had before. It's I it's, also found it doesn't match your experience. Although honestly, when you're watching a twenty four P movie anywhere in real world you have a you much have a higher wall. frame rate in the real world, don't you? Right, but but you have but you do, but you have a frame, but you 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 have a frozen wall, and there are some theaters like IMAX and um, and uh, Max and a couple other ones have, and Apple have their own theaters. The problem with the theaters, ironically, is that the screen in the virtual theater is too small. Like it's not as big. Oh, as you I can't make it, it as big because uh. <laughs> it says, "Oh, this is the frame well, I'm going to put it in." Right, and I couldn't get it to go yeah. bigger. Like it locks into the frame that it. Disney, so had, go ahead. Yeah. Disney lets you get in the, sit in the front row if you choose the Disney Plus theater, but that's it. Yeah, and, and the uh, I haven't been in Disney yet because, of course, Disney required a login, and I don't know what it is, and I was like, I'll get around to it eventually. And so um, <laughs> you don't you have know, like uh, was, you don't have Bitwarden or One well, Password in there. Well, here here's the yeah One Password for the iPad can be installed on it, and it will autofill your passwords. It's oh, with Optic ID. Nice. It's actually kind of remarkable. It is this device is an iPad, right? It's like a 3D iPad, but the good news is if your apps work on the iPad, then um, you can get them, if they are on the Vision Pro, you can put them in there and they all inter interact and they all work. And And I agree with Alex, I was watching, I was using a, a Vision OS exclusive app called Juno, which is a YouTube client because yeah. YouTube isn't there yet. And it is uh, the, the quality of a standard 2D image when you're not confused by like, oh, it's 3D or whatever. Um, it's really good. It's remarkably good as just a video viewer. Here's one yeah, of our and, and, uh, our Discorders, Vision Mad, who's watching right now while eating his cereal. <laughs> but honestly, how is that different than having a TV in your kitchen? I don't. Except when you walk around and you can move. Oh yeah, you, you move and the, the TV and, follows you. You know, like yeah. it's okay. The um the well and the other thing is you, you constantly are moving the wind. I found myself constantly moving windows, so I'm I'm constantly oh I want to put this over here. I want to put this over here. I want to put this over here. And like I was watching that, I had a client that was texting me on Sunday while I was watching the movie, and I just simply put my messages up above the screen. And so if I saw them change, I looked up and I and as I said oh I want to say something, the 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 movie went down, got quieter. And I said what I needed to say in the text, and then I went back to what I was doing. Oh, that's and, weird. Um, yeah. And so it was, and so I just didn't really think much much of it. It was totally in that environment. Natural. And yeah. That's one thing well, Apple's the, very good at is kind of making those affordances feel I, natural, even if you're in a in a spatial computing environment that you've never experienced before. I I will admit that I was. I think the thing that frightened me the most about the headset was actually that thing, which was that there was a, a moment last night, and I was probably ten. Or twelve or fifteen hours into the into using the the headset, and um and I, not in the one day, just over the since Friday morning, um I had been I in it, and I suddenly was I was watching YouTube, and there was some point where I looked down, and I realized, oh, I'm in the headset. Oh, <laughs> like I was, wow! Like I was I was just you watching forgot. YouTube and just kind of like because I have a lot of screens anyway, so it doesn't show like I have a, you know I have eight screens around me, so a lot of screens doesn't really show up like. <laughs> Like I'm somewhere it's not so different from your it's normal, not so different than my normal world. life. But I suddenly realized, oh, I'm in the I'm in the headset. And there was some point yesterday afternoon where I looked at something and I looked at it and I found myself tapping and I was like, oh no, I'm not in the headset. And so so like I'm like it, it was like I've this, heard this people say that yeah that that, that, that you just that, like with the iPad you get used to pinching and zooming and then you start using a Mac I tap and my you screen all the, I tap my laptop screen yeah. all the time like yeah. I just tap 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 like why isn't this working? So Ray Ray what I are you? My lower brain was getting. What's your killer app so far, Ray Maxwell? Well, <laughs> I have bad news. Uh oh. <laughs> you, you, we really should start with my experience of buying it from Canada. Yeah. So this is the first part. Is I didn't even know you could use it in Canada. Well, you can, and then you, you can't cannot. Buy anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you could. Uh, okay. On the January nineteenth at five a.m. in the morning, I signed on, and no sweat. 
Oh, there's Ray Maxwell. Yes, we'll take your $3,500 plus accessories, $4,800 with taxes, U.S., when I'm all done. And uh, no sweat. Yeah, place an order. And then I uh, I uh, went down to the Alderwood Mall Apple Store in Linwood, Washington. Walked in. You're, in the, you're buying the in the U.S. then, so you went over the border. Yeah. 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 Well, here, here's the thing. Apple has to understand that 90% of the population of Canada lives within 200 miles right, of the border. Right. It's not unusual and to we, go. Yeah. We, we, we cross border shop all the time. Right. Okay. And they really haven't allowed for that. And, it, but at any rate, I go in, oh yeah, we have your order ready for you. They do the demo. But I had a, not a good experience there. The poor girl, I think she was an extra brought in because there's so many people in the store. And by the way, they were going out like hotcakes, uh, the VPs. any rate, uh, it took her 20 minutes to get the demo went to work. And by the way, oh, that's fun. when they fit. <laughs> When they when they fit you out, they do not fit your unit to you. They fit the demo unit to you and check all the settings and everything. Oh, because the demo's on that unit. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then they bring you in sealed cartons your yeah. unit. That and makes you sense. Exit with, yeah, yeah. You exit with sealed cartons. Yeah. Now, I said to the manager of the store, very nice fellow, very helpful. Um, I said, now I have a Canadian Apple ID. What's the, when I get back to Canada and sign on, how's everything going to work? Oh, no sweat. Now, uh, I'm going to switch to my view here. This is, uh, my view and I'm going to take us to Haka Alia or whatever oh, that nice. is. And yeah. Right. And now uh, I get home and here's my view and, oh, I'm all excited. I can, uh, oh, I, my microphone's too close to me. Now, <laughs> any rate, it, it, uh, it, uh, I can open up Safari and here's Safari and I can bring in 3D models and, oh, it's all exciting. And then the message from hell. Ooh. What does it say? Not available? Not, not available. The App Store, App Store isn't available in your country. Oh, you or can't region. even get into the App Store at all. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that's frustrating. So you couldn't add apps to this at all. How are, how are we talking to you right now? Oh, I get it. You're on Zoom on your computer, and, and you're airplaying the view, or you have another device that you're putting the view in and yes, switching I, over to I have coupled. I have coupled my... VP right. to my iPad well, Pro, and it is plugged in by HDMI to my A10 Mini. I see it, yeah. So what can you do? <laughs> can you watch a movie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, the, all the movies I bought here in Canada, I can watch oh, okay. in 4K. I mean, honestly, okay. they don't say it's available in Canada. So you're, you're an example of an early adopter who was willing to take the chance but they aren't selling it in Canada. No. Okay. By the way, Jason yeah. Snell had to give up. He's switching <laughs> over. He's he couldn't he couldn't Yay, take it. That's All the face I love. So let's see. Sixteen minutes in, and uh, he says, "Why why are we not seeing him? I see him in the uh, I see him in the we got to oh we got to reroute. Okay, we're just gonna reroute it. And now we want to hear him Hi. too. It's there. Like, oh. oh. You don't look like Tim Cook anymore. Good morning. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Those are those hands. You don't look like Bobby anymore. So, uh, what was it? So, that, I mean, uh, the, 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 the trick is to you? use a the trick is to use an ID from uh, from the U.S. And yeah. so the the ones who are are gray market importing these things, most of them, the the people I know, they all have a even if it's not their primary, they have a U.S. Apple ID that they can use exactly. to get access to the store and yeah. all of those things. Yeah, right now, that. the only trouble with that, Jason, is I I am setting up a U.S. ID so I can get to that. The only trouble with it is I I lose my eco my Apple ecosystem. I can't yeah. copy and paste. Yeah, because everything is in your old ID. Other devices. Yeah. That's why you're By not way, supposed to do I, this. You're supposed to wait until it's for sale yeah, in Canada I, later. Yeah, this honestly, year. Ray, you will be able to use I'm this cheating. in a few months, I'm sure. Apple has a wonderful plan for your life. Why don't you give yourself to it willingly, Ray? This exactly. is counterproductive. By the way, have any of you looked at this uh, 3D model of the VP on Safari? 
it, it the detail <laughs> is is just incredible. I don't know right. how well it's coming through, but I'm seeing it's, it's really every good. I'm seeing every thread I, in the fabric. I think that one of the things we're going to see is we see a lot of 3D that's in there and a lot of it doesn't look good. But one thing that I will say is that if you look at some of the things that are actually doing the full resolution of the, of the, of it's, it's not the headset that can't do the high quality 3D. It's the fact that the developers or whoever's building it just didn't go through that much trouble. It's, it's a lot of trouble. Like what Apple did for that one <laughs> is a lot of trouble to get to that level of quality and people haven't spent that time yet. They will. They will now that they know, know that there'll be people looking at it in, in that kind of quality. And I should, by the way, just so uh, we don't uh, besmirch the Vision Pro, Jason, it wasn't the Vision Pro that we were tiring of. It was just that you, Zoom was kind of... I think I think the Zoom app on Vision OS is it's kind of iffy. I had some sound problems. I had yeah. some lag problems. I was having some frame skips where you guys would pause and then jump and I'd lose some of it. And it is also on a Wi-Fi connection when I use a right. wired connection when right. we're doing the show. So it's there's a bunch of different stuff going on yeah. there. Um, we actually had somebody I, it call. Is a, it is a 1.0 OS with a 1.0 app on it. So we had somebody, to be there. somebody yeah. call, uh, ask the tech guys on Sunday, wearing his and the lag was like five or six seconds. It was really yeah. laggy. Yeah. Uh, so that's, yeah, they'll fix that. that and there, and there are a lot of interesting, I, th I thought there were a lot of interesting uh, like choices that Apple made. Like I, on the one hand, it's cool that like uh, when you're using your persona, wherever you're, uh, Jason, you, you mentioned this earlier, though, wherever you're looking is where, wherever you're looking relative to the window that owns the camera, like so the zoom window, that's where it puts your avatar looking. Uh, yes. On the other hand, uh, is there a setting so you can simply say, look, I just want make it look as though I'm always looking directly at the camera? <laughs> no. no. I, what I noticed was it was I was talking to somebody who was like, so are you doing something else? Because you could see that I was like oh. I was moving some windows around to talk to them. Yeah. So I'm looking over here. So, you, you you know, you do get to see that that person is not looking straight at the camera all the time. Um, it's not like turning it off. It was definitely clear. Also, so. nothing says 1.0 operating system. Like, <laughs> is there a setting to take it from the default to do something else? And going, no, no, no. They're not at the part where there are settings for. I mean, there's like iOS settings, but but that's when, I mean, we've all been there. Yeah. It, using a 1.0 operating system there's this just like flavor this smell yeah. of it which yep. is just like <laughs> it's new car smell but also you get that moment where you get to the edge and you're like oh are there options and the answer is nope there's a question did, mark there's a cloud with a you know a, it's a mystery about what that option will eventually be but it's a 1.0 i get it i get it occasionally you get into apps and you're like how do i get out of here and like i don't i don't know I'm like, I'm like and do i, I press the button I did learn how to force quit, which is the yep. whole boat. Oh. Oh. You know, yep. so, oh. so the, um, that's and, ugly. Um, Yikes. And the, uh, well, the, the funny thing is, is that I was like, it was, um, so, so the, uh, but you know, and it's not so much Apple. These are app developers who just aren't putting the hooks where we want them, you know, so they're, they're building this thing. So you get into their app and then there's, and you can tap on it and get it, but then you're like, how do I actually turn that off? Cause it, what'll happen is you'll click on it. The apps will come forward and you realize that other app that you left to go into the apps, it's still out there. It's like, it's still opened over there, like doing its thing. And so you, um, you kind of get used to that. The, the, um, the app store, by the way, if you if you download it and you have any trouble downloading apps, the update fixes it. So there was an issue where, that I was having where on the 1.0, I couldn't, I just got to a point where it would just look like it was trying to download apps. And I just went to app, app, app. And then when I did the, ran the update to 1.1 or whatever, it it fixed it. But there was a point where I couldn't download anything yesterday um, to, to make that happen. And so, but, um, but you so see, again, some rough edges, but again, I, I, what I was surprised at was how long like I, I have most of the headsets and I've been using some version of a headset on and off for 30, 25 years. And uh, I was surprised at how long my sessions were. Like I was losing track of time, you know, like I was there and I was like doing things and mostly, obviously it's new. So I'm like watching some movies and I'm trying some 3D things out and I'm downloading apps and I'm opening things up and playing with them and everything else. But it was very comfortable to be there for, I mean, I don't think I did any session that was less than like 90, 90 minutes. I mean, I put them on every once in a while to set something up. Um, but it was like, it was, I was there for a long time I, and I didn't think about the time while I was there. That was yeah. the, the interesting thing. Yeah, I agree. I was, uh, one of my big open questions with this thing was, it, it, can you wear it for any amount of time? And I had two different 
experiences. In June last year, they put the it, a weird thing that is not available as a band where it was like the soft part, but also the head strap. And it hurt my forehead the whole time. And then a couple of weeks ago, I did a half an hour and they just did the dual band and it felt just fine. And so it, the, the mystery was like, what is this going to be like? And the answer was, I got it. It comes with the solo loop attached. I put it on my face. I got that exact same headache right in my forehead that I got last mm -hmm. June. I detached it. I put on the dual loop and I, I, I've i worn it for as much as six or seven hours in a day. I'm writing my review, guys. I have nice. to do this. Yeah. And and it was fine. And, it, like, it, and everybody's head is different, but I can say that it's least conceivable that you could wear this for an extended session and it would be fine. And I definitely yeah. feel like it, it. you get used to where to put it and how to put it on and how to pull the strap. I, I'm using the two strap. I found the single strap to be really not useful. Um, and so I uh, I do feel like with the... Uh, with the MetaQuests, I feel like that hook in the front that goes front to back would definitely improve my experience. I've been thinking about like printing a little thing to grab onto it and just let it pull back because I feel the weight under my on my cheeks. All the you weight know, is in kind of that device like being, on your face. I don't feel like, yep. but again, as weight on my head, it doesn't bother me. As a you know where the weight, how the weight right. is unbalanced, you know, cantilevered has you know it, and it doesn't bother me although i will say that like when i try to when it's it's when i notice it is when i'm speaking into i'm into messages because i do that a lot when i'm in there i'm like oh i you know i don't try to type um and so i just look up and hit the thing and say it i can feel it bouncing again yeah. you know, like pressing against my cheeks ray i noticed yeah, I that you're wearing it yeah, uh, bareback um do you not like yes. the dual loop you or you don't need it uh, you know what I ha I've been wearing this thing for hours yesterday and the day before. It looks and, very natural on uh, you, I should say. Yeah, it 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 is uh, quite comfortable. I haven't had a problem with it. Uh, I I was going to try out the dual strap, and I just you know, haven't done a necessity. It. Yeah, yeah. Now uh, let let me tell you a few of my other impressions of this thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, number one, the things that are missing. I'll give you my gripes, and then I'll tell you all my good things. Uh, I tried to lo load a ProRes file in. Now, this thing isn't really made for editing or the high-end uncompressed stuff, but but it, it wouldn't go in. <laughs> now, I don't know. It was just that one time, but uh, it doesn't like Pro Formats as I see it. And uh, the other thing is I thought they'd learned their lesson with uh, the iPhone uh, 14 and 15 Pro that they put USB-C in a high-speed uh, I.O. to load large files. And uh, the good news is I have found out that the developers do indeed have a dongle that will connect into this battery connection and give you USB-C in and out. And it sells for only two hundred ninety nine dollars. Oh my god! <laughs> and that's for testing. I mean, it's it's just there to it, it's there to tie it together. The um, I will say that I, I did find that it, it's pretty chunky if you take a, a five hundred and fifty meg USDZ file and try to rotate it around. <laughs> <laughs> like it was, you give it a couple, of, you know, you know, fifty million polygons, and it's like mm, it's a little, it's it, you know. So I, we were trying to push the outer edge of that. <laughs> now the the app that I'm dying to get my hands on as soon as I could reach the app store. And we're all talking, everybody's calling Apple support and saying, come on, turn on the app store to Canada, you know, be nice. At any rate, uh, the app I'm waiting for is uh, the uh, ForeFlight uh, company who makes a lot of aviation software has a 3D app that lets you look at a given airport and see all the air traffic in 3D Ooh, going in cool. and out of the airport. Nice. It's really Ooh. cool. The yeah, Voyage, cool. that's called the Voyager you, app. You, you yeah. tend to set it, I, I, I download it, you tend to set it over in one corner, like a little below you, because you can decide where you're going to set it and it definitely makes a difference because of where you see the, the planes. But you kind of set it over kind of like uh, about chest high, somewhere over to the side. And it's just nice because you'll be working. And you're like, I wonder what's landing in San Francisco. And you're like, over and you <laughs> see, all these, so cool. see all these planes. Like, it's just got kind terrain. Of, just kind of coming in. It's really, I should it's mention, though, slick. it's made by Boeing. So, I mean, you might want to check the bolts on that before. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The yeah, engines uh, or the, the sensors. The sensors on the front. Check the sensors on the front. Uh, also, that is don't, don't, cool, set right? it, don't set it to goose mode. It'll be very, very intense, I promise you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. the, the other thing I found out is uh, NordVPN does not make an app for the Vision Pro yet because I <laughs> wanted to try VPN and put myself down in the U.S. Oh, that know? would be a solution. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. You could do it at the router level. I mean, you, you could do yes. it. You know, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. right, exactly. 
There you go. Stuff, Just pretend but, you're but, in the but, U.S. Let me, I, let me give you my overall impression. My overall impression is a lot of people have not, I mean, if you read the technical spec on the Apple site and you only take even the marketing stuff and set your expectations to the literal meaning of everything, I'm not disappointed at all. I, I, I'm just wowed by the tech. I'm way, very much wowed by the resolution and the 3D models and the whole thing. But people have set their own personal expectations way high, you know, and, uh, you know, are dreaming about things that nobody's promising. And, and you know, I, I think uh, they're disappointed then, and you know. There's not, there, there aren't, there's there's 600 apps that were built for it. There's whatever, a million apps that you could theoretically run on it. There's about eight that are worth looking at right now. Like, it's any part yeah. of the thing is you go through them and you go, like I, I've now, people will, you know, you can put it into guest mode and hand it to somebody and say, okay. And they have to, you know, calibrate their, their eyes and show their hands and that type of thing. And then you go. Um, okay, go to the dinosaur. Like you take them to the, <laughs> go to the dinosaur demo. That's a good demo. And then go to jig space and see jig space, then watch a movie and then you're done. Like, like you yeah. see that I can show you the, if I show you those three things, you get a sense of what the thing can do. Um, the other stuff gets too hard to explain to someone. The Moog app is unbelievable. Um, you know, but, but that's a, that's a whole nother. Um, so there's, there's a lot of, you know, there's, there's definitely apps that are coming out, but there's probably eight or 10 that are, like standouts. I'm the looking, rest of them are like, oh, this is a good idea. They're they're on their way. They're thinking about it. I'm looking forward to to uh, virtual music apps. Uh, there's got to be a visual thermon. The Moog. There, the, oh, it is. Okay. The Moog. And, the Moog I mean, so there's spatial music. There's one called spatial music. And then right. there's one I called, knew that would happen. The, so spatial music is like a theremin. Like you can sit there and play with it and, and kind of move around. And then there's uh, the Moog app is crazy. It's it. You can... There's a bunch of different instruments and different things that you can play. And the crazy thing is, is that you're playing notes with your eyes and tapping when you want it to happen. And it's a really, uh, I found it to be really crazy experience because they're trying to play because you can't, you have to look at exactly what you want to play next. And, and then there's, they've, they started to kind of experiment with other tools and everything else. And so those are the two that are kind of, I felt like gave you a sense of what is coming. You know, like, it's not like that we're going to have different kinds of ways of interacting with music interacting with data, those types of things, but it's not there yet, but it's, it, those two are the probably the, and, the ones that kind of show you that. And of course, the thing I'm really looking forward to is a, uh, I'm hoping X-Plane, X-Plane I think already works with some yeah. VR headsets, but I want to see it Flight on this simulator. thing. Flight simulator. Yeah. I, I think can't it, wait. I think we were talking about this in office hours. I think that one of the things that is going to happen is you have like that Logitech, you know, your controllers. And I yes. think what's going to happen is they're going to give you two little trackers that just you just set on the on the top part of your control deck or whatever, and it will just snap the fuselage in. Like it'll just go, like I know where you are, and I'm just going to snap that in so that the rest of the fuselage looks like it's going around your. So you can look down. This is where the AR stuff comes. You can look down and grab onto your the physical handles and see them. You're not like in a virtual world. You're just looking at them. But when you look up, you get you know sky. How about, three, really how about 360 video? Uh, I have a bunch of stuff I shot in Rome. Uh, on the Insta 360, could I? Is there any way to look at that in the Vision Pro? I can do it. In I have Quest Three, obviously, but you need an app, and there are some apps. There's one app that is in the App Store. I'm not going to name it because it doesn't really work yet. But um, I have no doubt that there will be apps yeah. to Insta support we'll all of it. those formats. Rico will do it. Apple yeah. doesn't seem to be supporting it, which I'm actually a little disappointed by because they made that statement to somebody saying, "Oh, it doesn't meet our standards." Blah blah blah. But the truth is. Uh, if you shoot with one of these 360 cameras or 180 cameras, um, it's not going to be 3D, but it still could look really good. I think it'd be great. And, I'd be uh, able to look be around and see what I, you know, see everything I... Yeah. And the panoramas, which are also 2D, uh, panoramas are spectacular. They look better than panoramas. I, I understand yeah. now why they put that feature in there. They look I, so good yeah, geezer when nerd you're in, in a 3D our, uh, space. In our Discord is saying, I took a pano from my hotel balcony in Barcelona a few weeks ago. Uh, and I did not disappoint when I opened it in the Vision Pro. Super detailed, excellent unwrapping of the geometry yes, to make it look that's realistic. Yes, I I have a, a pano of my living room. I have a now I have a 
What I am impressed with is I can take my iPhone 15 Pro Max and I shot a little 3D video while the gal was demoing the thing to right. me. And playing that back, the resolution and the surround sound of being at the Apple store was incredible. I, I will say that so that I, I benefited from the fact that I I didn't realize I had taken so many, but I evidently since whatever <laughs> I since knew that you had, panos, I knew that you had. <laughs> I had I have six hundred panos of from all over the world of uh, nice. I'm, like in the White House and in weird and they're always a little and, dissatisfying on on the phone itself on the two D. Yeah, so, it is. Yeah. But this was I finally paid off nice. taking all those panos. You know, <laughs> nice. like I was because I've never I, like I've taken them and I almost never look at them again. Like I, I and I take them all the time but i never go back and look at them and i was like oh this was amazing how does like this, that i did that for the last decade how and does so, the spatial video you shoot on the iphone compare to spatial video you shoot on the vision pro because we've been for I, a while I think shooting the iPhone spatial is video. better you think it's better it's not <laughs> uh, you really think so yeah the, the I, I iphone video is lower quality uh smaller uh it's like a a, a smaller aspect ratio because they're cropping from one to the other. The, the one on, on the Vision Pro, the, the spatial video is superior. And a better interocular a distance, right? It's a more, it's yeah. a wider. Yeah, exactly wider right. Cameras. So you, everything is more it's wider, yeah. like your eyes and not yeah. like a little camera. Yeah, I found that the quality, I mean, again, yeah, I, I shot some with the, with the phone and I just I haven't shot any with the headset yet, but I shot some with the phone and I was like, eh, I don't know if I'll do that. Like I shot, right. and one of the things I did is I shot the same footage with the phone with and without stereo and if you told me which one would you rather watch i'd rather watch the higher resolution version that was not stereo than the low, lower resolution that was stereo and, and you know stereo even in the movies that they have it has i thought I, I will admit i thought it would be better than it was which is that um it still suffers from idiosyncrasies related to motion blur so you get feel things that look hard you know in 3d and so i don't feel like i mean you see some of the geometry but i don't know I don't know if it's worth it yet to watch a lot of a lot of a lot by, of the by the way stuff. there's there's uh, uh, talking about comparing 3D movies and 3D in this to me the experience is quite different uh, and I I I don't know how Apple solved this but in 3D movies the actual plane that your eyes are focused on and the binocular verging uh, sometimes doesn't match. Uh, your binocular eyes turning in doesn't match the plane you're focused on. Convergence. Mm -hmm. All right. And I don't know how they're doing it, but I, and that, by the way, makes people nauseated or gives them eye strain and so forth. I don't get that at all in watching 3D I, things in this. I definitely didn't get it at all. I think that the only thing that I was really conscious to was low frame rate and hard edges around things. Um, I felt like the, the 3D niche of it was good. I just felt like it was like, eh, you know, like now I will say, hidden in Apple Music. Apple, as this post uh, that we were talking about at first, they definitely buried some of the, the buried some of the story. Um, so hidden in music, there's an Alicia Keys video of her doing a concert, which it looks like they probably shot with a Canon R5, four of them. So they, they shot, it's a, it's a 180 uh, video experience yeah. of Alicia Keys. It's in the TV app. Is it in the TV app? Oh, yeah, I didn't see it's it in, in the their it's in their the immersive performances oh. list or per, immersive video list in the TV app with and the Alicia a, Keys thing where they where they try to mask out where the cameras yeah. are, but you they can look like spot speakers. them. They're in little white kiosks. Yeah, yeah. And they and they, and she walks around and and I and I guess I would say that uh, I thought it was a great example of what might be coming. And I what, given that Apple bought Next VR, I have a feeling we're going to see a lot more of this, um, not less. It is much more compelling than than a lot of the three D movies is to see this one eighty stereo. Oh, yes, um, it was. And I'll tell you the thing that they I think that the, what they missed there. And again, I've done a lot of this, and so we've kind of gotten into this habit. What they really should have done there is taking the rest of the band out of there, let her play the piano, and have her just play to you and just sing to you. There's moments where she looks right at the camera, and you know, it, it's much, it's very compelling, you know, and, and it, and I think that this idea of putting too much around them, you know, you end up in a more observer status than a presence status when you start changing the cameras. And I think that that's what, and so I think that there's, I don't think you need a lot of cameras to make this work. And I think that you can build that out. And we've done a lot of testing in this area. So, so the, um, and uh, so I think that that was the only thing I, you know, it felt a little over Apple overproduced, you know, I mean, in the typical, like, we spent all the money on it. I, 
I think it was a I think it was a good choice. I, I see what you're saying. There is a real question philosophically about whether you want to be a fly on the wall or whether you want it to feel directed, right? Does the yeah. camera move? Are there multiple camera angles and all of that? And the Alicia Keys video, while it is it is spectacular, but it is yeah, also a choice. And there's some questions about spatial audio, right? When you change your location by switching cameras, mm -hmm. does the audio shift? Does it stay the same? What how does it affect the soundscape? But I will say one of the things that struck me in the Alicia Keys video. And this is about how our brains work, is that when she is singing at the very beginning, she is looking right into that camera and it yeah. is like she's singing to me. Yeah. And so that good. some people it, it, in well, our Discord the is, Al, said they Alex didn't like, like so it. Good. I, I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, alone. Alicia Keys, I am an intruder. <laughs> I don't deserve <laughs> don't to be me. here. <laughs> yeah. Sing to yeah. someone else and just let me watch. And it's I think like that is a brain thing. It's here, a human yeah. brain thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a little creepy, yeah. but you will get used to it, and soon you will fall it's just in a love. Different. It's just different, yeah. right? And, well, and different I mean, people are going to react differently. But a lot it is, of people it in the Discord amazing. did not like it. I'm actually the, the amazed how many shocking. people in our club have Vision Pros. I think yeah. we're going to have to do a lot more Vision Pro I'm coverage. Not <laughs> I'm not surprised <laughs> I admit, either. I admit, we talked about Vision Pro on Office Hours this morning. It's the most viewed non-WWDC show yeah. we've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> like it was definitely a We're going to take a break, Ray. I want to give you a last chance before we go into the break and we let you go because you are in Canada, uh, if there, can you see the Alicia Keys thing, for instance? Can you download that? Can you do some of these? Oh, one of the one of the disappointments is I thought when I got home and unpacked my thing that the whole demo thing that I saw would be available to me. Oh, the demo's it not. It isn't. Yeah, it is. No. It is. It is. It if is. you go, it, so so if you're maybe not in Canada, I can't speak no. to that. But but if you if you're in the U.S. and you wonder about that demo, you, it's hard to find. You have to go open the TV app. You have to go to the search tab, and then when and without searching, it provides a bunch of suggestions. And uh, one of them is a bunch of spatial suggestions. And the last one of those is the demo reel, which does include. Somebody was asking in the Discord, you know, are those series? And they are those videos where they're like. You know, performance episode one and dinosaurs episode one. Those all and the the uh, the immersion adventure episode one oh, with okay. the the per woman in the uh, in the, at the fjord. Those um, there are clips from things that we haven't seen yet that are in that demo video, and you can watch it. What so do you think fiction hidden, TV will do in this? Will will there be a Sopranos or a Succession for Vision Pro that will transform the way we see television? My guess is webisodes because it's experimental, like Alex said, right? Our our vision of uh, of movies and TV involves a point of view, a director, you know, mixage montage, right? Cuts and zooms and all sorts of stuff that you learned about in film school if you went to film school. But that is is that the best format for immersion? Uh, you know, you listen to Alex and he would say you kind of don't want that. You kind of want to. To let people be in the environment, which is why I feel like at least at the start, it's going to be more like webisodes. There's a rumor that they did a bunch of behind the scenes stuff for the Godzilla show on a, on yeah. Apple TV Plus. So that's what I, I think is going to happen first cool. is people are going to like do that. And then maybe the next step is an, a sort of like, you know, those Christopher Nolan movies where there are selected scenes in IMAX where right. there'll be things like that too. But I feel like we're in experimental mode. I'm, I'm uh, Alex, what do you I agree. think? I agree. And I think that, I think that the behind the scenes is going to be very compelling. I think that when I think about what I think will happen versus, and I have no idea, but, um, the matrix white, the white rabbit version, if anyone remembers the old DVD, there was a white rabbit, you could turn it on the white rabbit version of the matrix. And as you watch the matrix, you would, little white rabbit would pop up in the DVD and you'd click on it and it would show you a whole behind the scenes of how that shot got built. You know, you wouldn't want to watch it the first time. Right. And when you want to watch it again, you'd watch through it. And I think that, um, you know, they've seen these stereo cameras bouncing around the Apple sets for a while. So we assume that, you know, probably you may see a scene that might be done in 180. You might see a, a lot of behind the scenes that, that are done in 180. Um, I don't think we're going to see a lot of 360. Again, 360, the problem with it is, is that the lift between 180 and 360 is fairly dramatic and the payoff is almost zero. Because you have almost to stand up and around. turn and it, around. And, well, yeah. yeah, you've got to so stand up to use it. it. Well, the other thing is, is that for, for us to create, the reason that the oh, yeah. return is very low is because you have to stand up and look at it. The reason that we don't like to do it is because we, A, have to now clean up everything. Yeah, you never you have to hide. A movie set else. is 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 a proscenium. Yeah. No, you never well, have yeah. the stuff behind exactly. the camera I agree. visible. And Alex, you, you probably noticed this. I, I really enjoyed looking at the Alicia Keys video, especially, but all those immersive videos are fascinating because 
you can actually see if you look at where the crop is that 180 immersive yeah. um there are there are moments like early on in the alicia keys video they want to crop out one of the cameras and so the yeah. right side is a little it, bit it, narrower before you get to the black space yeah. uh and like that's all going on there too so it, it's very clear like it, it's hard right they, 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 they wanted to you they tell that they wanted to, they wanted to sell you on the on the feeling of it before you as you watch it, you slowly realize you you slowly identify where all the cameras where the cameras are. are. Yeah, you know that's kind of part of the show. But but it's but I think that yeah, you're right. I was like, I don't think I saw that at the very beginning. You didn't. <laughs> so it was, uh, and but I do think that you're going to see a lot of experimental. I think for music, for performance, and everything else, this is going to be a, a lot of people time. talking about sports uh, being perfect for sports. I don't, man. Yeah, we it talked is, about that. It, it looks so good that that demo. One of the reasons to watch that demo video is because it does have a couple of sports clips Court, in it. courtside with the warriors would be pretty amazing yeah. wouldn't wouldn't it though yeah. so the question is like what are the rights issues however uh disney is apple partner and they have espn um well, the nba, NBA app is, is on there committed. on day one yeah, yeah i think nba sees um, and the then value. yeah max mm -hmm. is a an nba partner and the max app is there you know on I day want, one so Jason, there's lots of options because you're an f1 fan you'll get this there is an uh, f1 viewer program for my mac that lets me see f1 tv their person their own video feed has every driver's view it has all sorts of data views it has of course the race view but it also has i mean it, it's it's 20 screens if you open them all i would love to have that in uh I and do watch think F1 you're races with, and that would be for amazing sports, i definitely think for sports you're going to have the ability to open up a couple windows you know eventually of these are fixed fixed windows that you can always open up and you can throw yeah. bits over here or multiple games like i think with mls we're going to see a lot of the the refinement of this where i can have four or five games up and i can look at one and tap my fingers and hear the audio and look at another one tap my fingers and hear that audio and i can you know possibly and i do think that you'll have what we found with 360 at least with with soccer was that you you generally wanted to experience a moment in 360 but right. you didn't want Not to watch the whole, the whole game. game that way because right. there's a lot of cut there's a reason there's a lot of cameras there right. and so you still want to see the, the cut but you also want to like it'd be really great to be standing on the pylon or right behind the pylon right when someone is diving over the the goal line or, or something like that in football those are the kind of thing, but you only want us to be there for the moment that it happened or right after it happened not <laughs> the rest of the game Des despite jim james cameron's uh so advocacy and support 3d did not really happen in movies and it really didn't happen at home on the tv set is this going to bring 3d back i think that i think you'll see more 3d production i mean i know a lot of people who own the, the you know james cameron did it right and so that everyone loved it and then everyone else did it very badly and so everyone burned out of it really quickly if you're cutting people out and putting them on cardboard little cardboard planes yeah. um and the people aren't going to enjoy it the reason that avatar made us see that 3d was a future was because he actually shot it in 3d so so a lot of the movies that are just kind of fake 3d are probably not gonna you know that model isn't really going to work but i do know that everybody who's got 3d rigs back from the last wave of 3d are all dusting them off and trying to make sure that they can run and everything else. Those, those are these are like sixty thousand dollar rigs that that need to be turned back on again. And they were selling for five. Like I could have bought three of these like two years ago for five grand each. You know, like just almost a hunk of metal. You know, um, and so so there's a um, a lot of people are going back into that. I don't know to be honest if sixteen by nine three D is really going to be the future. I think it. I think that there's a lot that's going to go on with the one eighty stereo. Um, and, and so I think that that's going to be a really interesting thing. I also watching on the headset and this won't change the way people make movies. I do find that the wider the screen, the less quality of the experience for me as a viewer. So the IMAX one, four, three, or even one to ones, um, which is, I think you get one to one when you shoot with the headset. Um, but that more squarish, you know, when I, I was, and I noticed it because I, I put on, um, the wizard of Oz, which is a one, three, three, I think. And I put Wizard of Oz on. I was like, wow, it looks really, really good. And then I put something on that was like 235. And you have to zoom it back so that you can see everything. And so now you just feel like you got a lot less, you know, like in the, as an experience. And so the, because the headset does have a limited uh, field of view, um, that you, you notice the, that limited field of view on a widescreen video that more than you see it in a squarish, yeah. you know, experience. Yeah. And Casablanca so I think Casablanca on Max looked really great, actually. Yeah. One of the nice things is you get out of the, of the box and the movies yeah. are just whatever shape they are. Yeah, they're no letterbox. Um, yeah. yeah. Just, and that, so what, what was felt less, you felt like you were being pillared.
yeah. um, now feels, now you can zoom it up more and it actually feels bigger and, and, and better in a lot of ways in that more squarish format. Ray, we're going to uh, take a break. I want to give you a final thought before we go to the break, because uh, uh, I don't want to keep you here forever. Um, okay. He's sweating right into that uh, thing. and I. <laughs> no, no, I'm very comfortable. Yeah. How, how many hours have you spent in it so far? You think? Oh, I've spent three or four hours in it yeah. and, you know, didn't didn't find no it uncomfortable. I, okay. I sat on FaceTime with mine. A friend of mine went down with me, another Canadian, and picked up his and we've been sharing our experience by the way lest you feel too sorry for me everything that's on apple tv that i had access to before i went down there i have access to in my vision pro so that's good all the tv shows and movies and so forth i have been viewing those in this and uh i have to say i think this is the best 3d experience i've had what what do you think alex of yeah 100%. for viewing no, 100% best, best viewing, best 3D. And we always knew that headsets were going to be a better viewing experience. I think that the problem with the yeah. meta, the, the Quest was just resolution. And so the resolution has been solved on this one. And so it's definitely the best 3D um, viewing experience that I've had. I think that, right. again, I think that what, what we're going to start to see is increased frame rate. You know, so that as the frame rate goes up and I, you know, I was talking to someone else about it and I didn't really think about it from a gamer's perspective, but they said, you know, the, the, older folks generating content or the people who've been doing it for a long time are really into 24p but the gamers the next generation are gamers and they want to see 144 they want to see 120 they yeah. want to see high frame rate yeah. and they don't right. want to see 24 and so that so there's a pretty strong push i think for right um you know I, there's you know rumors I that wonder the, why that a lot apple of the production requests are 8k 120 i wonder why apple didn't make this just a screen and have since you're already tethered to a battery why not just put the whole computing device uh, separately, you could make a much more powerful uh, computing device. Um, I don't know. I, I I think that was the problem with the Oculus. I mean, the Oculus did that, and it you was had a you tether were, to you know, a computer. Tether, yeah, you know, and yeah. and um, and I think the problem is is that what's very convenient. Like I and I've worked with ones where they have huge cables coming down from the ceiling that right. hook into your head, and and so on and so forth. And it's cool. And some of them had a lot of performance. They had Onyxes running them, and all. Yeah, kinds that was of my first experience, and that was in the early nineties. Yeah, exactly. And so the, the, uh, but I think that again, for me to be able to walk over to my living room, sit down and watch. So mobility is important. To, uh, it is. Be able to lie down and walk yeah. around. Yeah. 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 And I'd be, if I'd I want to go all, that. If, if I want to go all day, I have power. That's a big battery. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have this for my Blackmagic 6K Pro. Right, well, I, right. I can uh, plug it in and go all day and yeah. clip this on my belt. It has a belt clip. As long as you have uh, so, power delivery. I think the, the wattage that the adapter that comes with it is, I think, 30. So anything 30, that you yeah, deliver, yeah. which PD absolutely can do. Right. So anything that could deliver full power to it. Uh, well, and it doesn't even need to be full power because you're... you're you're just the battery. trickling it up. So, okay. So even All if right. you even if you had ten watts, it would just slow. It would, the battery would it would, it would just slow the. Yeah. It would right. just it would last for five it, hours instead of two or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, I am not disappointed. I am wowed by it. I'm having a lot of fun playing with it. Playing with my friend who got one, and uh, thank you for having me on today, uh, Leo, and uh, the rest of the team here. And uh, I am enjoying it. And stay in touch. Always love having you on, Ray. You're the greatest. Um, I, you never have anything to plug. Uh, you still taking? You still <laughs> yeah. doing photography? Are you going to change how you do photography with this in mind? Oh yeah, I I can't. Well, I I can't wait till summer comes and I can take this to the glider and the airplane. Oh yeah, I'm still flying. Okay, yeah, yeah. and uh, I think I can have a lot of fun with this, especially uh, doing 3D of the cockpit. <laughs> yeah, or just a loop to loop because I'm not going up there, but uh, be, I'd love to watch. <laughs> I'd love to experience it in the safety of my own home. Ray Maxwell, always exactly. a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Sure thing. Take care, Ray. I enjoyed it. Someday he bye won't bye. be in Canada, and <laughs> or maybe <laughs> no. The the Vision Pro will come to you. That's the way we want. Uh, we're going to continue. We got a great panel, and we're going to continue with our great panel of. Uh, in fact, you know, <laughs> I've got color graphs too. We need to do those in Vision Pro. Uh, Jason Snell is here from SixColors.com. Andy Anako from GBH Boston, and from OfficeHours.Global. Um, Alex Lindsay, and of course, uh, Ray spends a lot of time in office hours too. So another place if you had questions for Ray or you 
wanted to talk to him some more, that would be a place to go. Our show today brought to you by Ecamm. You know, on Sunday, uh, just towards the end of Twit, the power went out in the studio. I was sitting in the dark, and I ran home, and I fired up Ecamm, and I was able to finish the show from my house. In fact, it makes me think maybe <laughs> that's the future. Ecamm is the leading live streaming and video production studio built for Mac, and I love it. Whether you're a beginner or or an expert, Ecamm is here to elevate your video production. From streaming and recording to podcasting and presenting, Ecamm Live is your all-in-one video tool, perfect for simplifying your workflow. It works great with all my cameras. I just love it. And it and by the way, multiple camera support means and screen sharing means you can switch from camera to camera, even to your screen. Your live camera switcher lets you direct your show in real time. It's, it's incredible. Stand out from the crowd with high-quality video. Yes, you can do the lower thirds. Yes, you can add logos, titles, graphics, share your screen, drop in video clips, bring on interview guests, use a green screen. It does it all. It does it all. Join the thousands of worldwide entrepreneurs, marketing professionals, podcasters, educators, musicians, and other Mac users who rely on Ecamm Live daily. We are big Ecamm fans. Of course, Mike and Rosemary use it on iOS today. Get one month free when you subscribe to any of Ecamm's plans. Honestly, I wish Ecamm had been around when I started Twit. I might not have built this giant studio. Visit Ecamm.com slash Twit. Use a promo code TWIT at checkout. Ecamm and Ecamm Live are amazing. Uh, back we come. Now, one of the things uh, that we should probably talk about is we're already hearing drum beats about Vision Pro 1.1 or Vision OS 1.1. I think a beta is now out. Uh, there the developer were, beta just came out, I think. Yeah, because uh, one of the complaints people had is if you forget your PIN, do not forget your PIN. You had to go to the <laughs> Apple Store to reset it. That's fixed in 1.1. Uh, and, and there are some other things. Yes, Jason, you, are you, you haven't installed all, it yet. I haven't installed it. All I have heard is that you have to reset your persona. Somebody in the discord just said that, which maybe suggests that they're doing some persona tweaks as well. I don't know. I, I don't know whether to think that all of these versions are going to be like little tiny tweaks to fix bugs that have cropped up or whether they're going to keep rolling stuff out. My guess is they're holding new stuff for maybe a 2.0 release come WWDC and that this is going to be more addressing all of the kind of like hair on fire bugs that are being discovered. Like I found a bug uh, about movies anywhere redemptions show up as 3d, but don't play in 3d oh. in the TV app. And it's just a weird thing where you, Easily you end up in between. And, yeah. and I, my understanding is that they're on it and that they're working on it, but right. there's going to be a lot of stuff like that where you'll, they're like, Oh, we didn't even think about that. So I imagine that's going to be the case, but you never know. I mean, a whole 1.0 cycle, is it possible that there's something they held back that they're like, yeah, we're just going to drop that in now. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I also know that there are rumors that there will be a Vision Pro Lite or a Vision, maybe not Pro, Vision something, uh, maybe even Vision, later I, later I this year. Later this year, I, I'd be surprised. Well, I'd vision, be surprised. vision for riffraff. Vision no, for I you think, and me. I think Andy. Ming Chi yeah. Kuo said that it's going to be, and and Mark Gurman both have said that it's going to be years, yeah. years for this new hardware. Yeah, twenty twenty six is I think the number. Oh, the, the, all right. The thing that we're hearing is that this is it. For this the, is it, and, and I think that, that most likely then that allows this one to go one direction, which is a higher performance headset, possibly for the same price or more. And another one that goes down that is the, probably the same specs as this headset. Like right. this is probably what we get for the, yeah. what you get with for it for they're, less, they're, later. They're limited by display technology right now. Not only uh, their next, their next level up is going to have to be to try to make these micro displays even better. Until then, they are certainly not going to degrade the, the video experience of using this device. So the only way they can get the price down is until Sony manages to control their yields, control their manufacturing. And therefore, that's the only opportunity they would ever have to get this at a thousand bucks. And that's not happening anytime soon. Yeah, I mean, there is so so they do their margins all always improve. The longer you use those parts, the longer they're on the production line, the cheaper it is for Apple to make it, which is a thing that happens. But and I yeah, I I have a hard time imagining that this isn't the low price, whatever it is, 
would be sort of a decontented version of this, including things like taking the eyesight off the front and maybe the bands are not, there are only one in the box and it's a cheaper one. And I mean, they'll, they have to figure that stuff out, but um, it, it certainly in the long run, they have to make one that doesn't cost 3,500 or 3,000 or 2,500, honestly. Yeah. Um, but I think it's going to be a while, right? Like I think if they could make that product now, they would have, and instead it's going to move more like a couple of years away. Yeah. What do you what do you think they're going to do with eyesight though? Do you think they're going to try to improve it, or are they going to decide that okay, this was an interesting idea, it's not really, it's not really winning hearts and minds. We may as well just drop it and cut the and use and take that money back. I kind of think it's too early to tell, but what I want to answer is almost say to say yes and say I think they need to experiment with it, and maybe they will continue to experiment with it. Look, there's a scenario where they just the the people inside Apple who said why are we spending money on this thing? It's dumb. Nobody cares. They may win the day based on customer feedback, but I think it's also possible that they'll like win the day on the low end system that they're designing, but on the high end they'll be like no 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 we can do it better, and <laughs> and maybe they'll be given that opportunity. I do think. They, that they are right in saying there needs to be an indicator to say, I can see you or I can't see you. But it doesn't need to be a, a full display with a 3D representation that's animated of your eyes. Sure. Or could it be something a little less than that to indicate that I can see you? You know, googly eyes on, googly eyes off, that kind of thing. <laughs> I, I'm going to guess that they went this way because they tried those other ones and they looked goofier than this. You know, and so they, they might have decided that this is the, uh, I will, right. I will the say people that who I won the a, argument at least. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so Did I think you, that the, so I think, I think it's going to probably just try to get better um, rather than go away. That's my guess. Yeah. It, but maybe it's, it's hard. It's hard to say like, which would, uh, you just got me thinking like, which would feel more natural looking at someone who's wearing goggles, which is something that you're kind of used to, particularly if you live in Aspen uh, versus looking at somebody who suddenly a green light in the middle of the bridge of the nose lights up, even if it's a tiny little light to say, Oh, by the way, my attention is now on you. Would that be disquieting that like now I'm looking at a glowing light as, as opposed to your human I face? Just, I, I, it's so dim. I don't really know. Like it, I just don't know if it matters. I, I think that sure. people have really gotten hung up on the eyes and they've gotten hung up on the avatars. And I would say that I just don't, I don't use either of them that much. And so I just don't know if it really is that big of a, I mean, I think that maybe, but I don't, I don't know. It, it's so, it's like such a small percentage of the experience that I'm not sure that, that it matters. Didn't we well, really know all along though, that there would be many things that wouldn't, be sticky and that there are things that would be and that the point of this yeah. is to find yeah, out exactly. so uh i don't think yeah. it's a problem if some of it doesn't stick it's yeah it, oh yeah okay that didn't but, work we tried and it yeah. didn't work there but as long mm -hmm. as but there does need to be and i'm starting to think there might well be killer apps for this uh in the next month or so that would that would make people go okay it's sticky i this is i i will buy yeah. it for that yeah by then it'll but, be too late. By the way, y'all, yeah. <laughs> Yo, you guys have got one. You're you're lucky you have one. Yeah. <laughs> but 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 it, but it is a feature category they're gonna have to stick with because the thing that that's always gonna be dogging this device is that it is isolating. That you can only really right. talk to people. Right. Only really talk to people who have this thirty five hundred dollar thing. And if you don't have any sort of concession to people who are uh, also in the room, if you don't have a way while you're using this to have a video chat with other people who uh, who are uh, who are in your life without having this thing on your face it's a problem that apple is going to want to solve i think in some way shape or form whether this is the best way to do it i guess apple's going to figure that out if they if they get rid of these features i don't think they'll get rid of the intent though we yeah, have a oh, loop sure. a loop sure. hiker in the discord <laughs> By the, so i guess we're going to see people going on hikes wearing these things i think it'd be better to take them off and just enjoy the great outdoors but anyway you know what Nature is in 3D, and the resolution's spectacular. Uh, he says that uh, his key killer app would be uh, dropping app windows around his house and having them persist as he moves through the house. Can you do that, well, that now? That you can do that now. The problem is that if you reboot the thing, uh, they go away. Yeah, and that yeah. I I mean, but that's uh, we talk about 1.0, like that strikes me as a very clear feature ad for 2.0 or for 1.1, which is save the window location. Yes. And there's a, there's a thing you, if you hold the digital crown down, it will summon all your windows to you. I literally said, I, I was telling my wife this uh, the other night. I, I literally said last week on Friday, after I got the thing, Oh, I left my settings app in the garage. <laughs> yes. 
I left. I did. I left yeah. my settings app in the garage. And, and it is on one level, it's brilliant, right? Like the idea that if you want to work that way and leave like a widget in a in the kitchen and have it be there when you go to the kitchen, uh, you should Perfect. be able to do that and yes. have it persist. But it, it right now it doesn't persist across reboots, but I can't imagine that that's not going to be a so feature. In fact, a, a lot of the things they need to build are window management. I, that, that just is so clear to me, even after only using it for a few days, is that they built the first iOS-based freeform multi-window interface. And because it's not a Mac, it it doesn't really have any window management to speak of. And it's well, a problem that, that they're going to have to build I find myself on. hitting that yeah. crown all the time. Like, just yeah. tap the crown and everything comes to the front. Yeah, it comes back. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I love I love the idea of, like, when, when they start to go beyond the idea of, let's just, let's just have, like, uh, Mirage floating screens that lock into place. Imagine being able to, like, I'm looking at, like, a uh, like a poster I've got on my wall. Imagine being able to simply tap on that and say, I want my timers. I, instead of looking, instead of seeing that picture, I want to see timers. Yeah. And instead of, and that that's going to be that that thing I'm pointing out right now. Uh, that window I actually want to have like a live view of the Parthenon so, or whatever, and not have not have to simply like open a window, drag. It's like no, when I walk into this room, when I'm in game mode, I can always look in the exact same place to know what the time is, how long has this show been running, that sort of stuff. This is exactly. It's actually one of the things that I'm surprised there's not more true like augmented reality in this product there's a little bit of it but there are these hints that go to what you're saying which is i feel like one of the things apple has just sort of like deferred for now is object sensing to do things like saying i would like to apply this to that that shape you know that that framed picture that window like physical window not window in an os and and have it go there there are a few places where they do that one is your laptop where they detect your laptop using machine learning. They're like, that is a laptop. They know that it's a Mac and they put the little thing right above it that says connect, which I can only get work like half the time. Mm. But uh, but I it, it's, you know, it, it's very cool. And the other one is keyboard. If you, if you pair a Bluetooth keyboard to this thing, which I have done, uh, and then, and you look down at the keyboard, there's a little, flo the floating like autocorrect and suggestion bar floats right above the top of the keyboard because it recognizes the shape of the keyboard. Obviously, it also recognizes the shape of your hands and it breaks those out, but there could be more of that. And I like what you said, Andy, which is that's a good example of like, it's like snapping windows to the side of your screen or something. It's being yeah. able to say, I would like to play something, not just kind of over there, but like, I'd like to play something on that framed picture and have the device understand that that's an object in 3D space. And that they're not quite there yet, but that's that's one of the exciting cool. places that they can go with this stuff. And they in WWC, they showed persistence, you know, like being able to drop objects into the real world and leave them there for like somewhere in a park and people could walk up and it was still yeah. be there if they knew it was there. There was a... Uh, so the, sharing so that's, is the that's other all, big question, right? There was a yeah, Minecraft was, I think that, game that, that failed that Microsoft put out, but that was the premise of it. But uh, but you could... So, and what it did is it was a mixture of the GPS information as well as right. image, uh, a scene recognition. Microsoft so has a technology see all these that. things and lock it in. Microsoft and, has and, an Azure uh, technology with location. And uh, Apple showing that showed that maybe I don't know four or five years ago yeah, is, right. is that technology that we well, haven't used, and so you could totally be, you could again. I think that what's really interesting is I'm, I'm as this grows, I don't know, like I, I kind of feel like I know this will sound dystopian, but I feel like I want an, a room in my off in my house that is like fifteen by fifteen by fifteen that is just empty, you know, because I kind of just want to have a place I can just walk in and just it's do called things the not have. I want you to name it. No, the I, 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 the thought had crossed my mind. It just, I, I was like, we've talked about it this morning. I was like, it's like the belt without the lions. And so the, um, and so the, uh, uh, so it is a little belt like in the sense that you want to go in there. You just don't want a lot of stuff. In, well, the biggest problem you have is there's stuff in the way. <laughs> like, like, we're oh, we're referring here. to a and, classic Ray Bradbury short story, which everybody favorite. who wants to do that should read. <laughs> called should, the belt. Yes, oh, for sure. But there's no, there's no lions. And, there's and so no the, lions. So the, and nobody's going to no eat lions you. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, but I will say that like we, I was, this is. Right. Georgia Dow has a, has three VR rooms because everybody in her family wants to play. Well, the, the, um, uh, with the HoloLens, uh, there was a company that I was working with that had a, it was probably 30 by 30 room that was empty. And what they let you do is wander construction sites. So you could sit there and wander around through a construction site and, and, uh, and they would take, it was like LIDAR scans and you could see as built versus, you know, and th so they were already kind of doing those visualizations. But what you end up needing is, and we did this with, um, in our office, it was about probably 
40 by 40 by 20, we built a virtual museum. And so you could walk around in the museum and it was, now we were using outside in tracking because we had a motion capture system. So you could wander around, but there were like these huge statues and you could wander around and get information. And, and so, and um, so I think that that kind of thing is going to be um, things that we think about in the not very distant future. I think that, I think Apple has not only buried the lead a little bit in their marketing, they buried the lead deep into, they haven't even released most of what they have in this headset. And so I think that we're probably, I think WWDC is probably going to be yeah. a really fun week. <laughs> Alex, the, the, um, that, that's the impression I get too, is that there, there are clearly like whole swaths of this that they just said, let's set that to the side for now and yeah. ship this yeah, thing, yeah. right? And, and uh, more augmented reality based on sensing existing objects and attaching yeah. things to them is one of them. And absolutely true, sharing in general, whether it's sharing with yeah. people virtually or sharing in the real world, having kind of like pl things that are consensual. If you have two of these right now in, in the same room, they are looking at completely different scenes. But yeah. they, clearly, you have to go in a direction where objects can be marked as a shared object in a space instead of not. Whether yeah. it's in the real world, like tagged out in the world somewhere, like you said, or whether it's just in a particular room. All, and, and then the creation of virtual spaces with shared items that people can go in um, rather than it just being kind of like a fancy FaceTime. And it's clear that like they have all the pieces for this. And at some point they're like, not in 1.0, just no, not in 1.0. Right. And I don't think it's the hardware. I think it's just the software. They left well, whole chunks and they and, just said later, do that and, later. And knowing that Apple has been doing this, working on this for a decade, when you look at the sharing of watching videos on face on um, over message, you know, and you know, the, the sharing, the movie sharing, takes on an entirely different view when you think about this of being, we've talked about not being able to watch it, but what if you have a bunch of people with headsets and it ties all their movie experiences together so they can sit there and talk amongst themselves and watch a movie if they're not in the same room, you know, with each other. Um, so it's it's going to be... And you can see their thumb faces all around you. It'll be so amazing. Well, and, and you know, the the um, uh, free, you know, the free form app or whatever is is something that might be pretty interesting. Oh yeah, too. whiteboard, yeah. The, the free form, I think, which is Apple's like next notes, you know. So here's an interesting data point. This is a company called Metaviz. Thank you to the Discord who uh, passed this along. FDA cleared surgical AR. This is a Vision Pro app for uh, surgery. And maybe tie that to the fact that there is a San Diego hospital system that just bought 30 Vision Pro units and, and has launched a new spatial computing center of excellence. There, uh, this is from the San Diego Union Tribune. Uh, Sharp Healthcare in San Diego, 30 units. But what they're doing is interesting. They're not just giving it to physicians and nurses. They're also giving it to informaticists and software developers and others. So that, you know, I don't, that may just be a, a well, it's, it's, publicity it, stunt, but maybe not. It's, it's something like this may not, that might not yield anything for three to four years, but it's like, right. hey, we should get a bunch of these head, I'm so, what someone decided is, hey, let's get a bunch of these headsets in and see what we can and do. And see what them. we can do. You know, yeah. and, and see what we can yeah. do. There's, there's probably Actually, potential, can... there's potentials right. for, I mean, already in the meta for, for the quest, there's been, you know, a lot of PTSD treatment, um, especially you know, mixed with, you know, psycho psychoactive drugs and so on and so forth that have been really effective. Like, um, and so those types of things, those kinds of treatments are going to probably be things that people test, you know, on those things. Uh, it's, you know what, I have to say, I, uh, I'm a little less skeptical than I was. How hard would it be <laughs> asking for a friend to take, let's say somebody you bought a Vision Pro for and to take it and make it yours? Can you, can you do that? <laughs> yeah, you should be able it's, to do it. It's, uh, you know, the answer to so many of these questions is, can you do that with iOS? And yeah. then if you can, you, like, there's literally... It's really an iPad. You said that was very interesting reset, when you said Yeah, that. the reset or transfer feature yeah. on the iPad, yeah. uh, it's there in the settings app. If you yeah. can find it, if you didn't leave it behind in your garage, uh, you it's it's right there. Yeah, no, that, that is one of the things that really struck me using it, Leo, is as somebody who has attached an iPad to a screen, used it in that magic keyboard with a trackpad, put it in, in a stage manager where you've got multiple windows and all of that. It, oh, it is an iPad. Like in so many ways, yeah. it is the mega 3D iPad um, with, you know, and then the Mac, and the Mac sharing window is there if you want to use a Mac and that's great too. But it is like, that's, 
that's the platform advantage. That's the advantage ha Apple has of having built this on top of iOS for more than a decade is there's all this infrastructure stuff that it's just there, right? And it might look a little different, like control center is hidden behind a little firefly. You have to look up and find and then tap on, but like it's control center. I didn't need to look up how to attach a Bluetooth keyboard. I literally tapped and held on the Bluetooth icon in control center. <laughs> and it said, would you like to pair this keyboard? And I said, right. yep. And it was paired. So there's so much of it that anybody who's used an Apple device will be familiar with. And that's good as a user. But also, if you're developing this thing to not have to invent all that stuff, all that plumbing, all that basic, like, what goes in the settings app? It's like, it's the settings app. You've well, seen it before. It's familiar. And I, and I think that, the, that and people have talked about this a little bit, but the, really the secret weapon to this is the fact that as an Apple user, it so ties into everything else you already have. The ecosystem of my notes are there and my texts are there and all the, and I can transfer files very easily there. I can, you know, so the thing is, is there was so much of my time that was spent. Like, I think that it was always like you could put things on the quest, but you're like, Ooh, like, like, like uh, this is going to be a thing, you know? And with this, I'm like, oh, I have a little, I have a thing, a transfer doc uh, folder in my iCloud. I just throw things in there that I want to put on all the devices. So I just throw models in there, whatever. And I open them up and I start looking at them, you know, and, it, the and so it's it, that fluidity is is a big part of why I think it's probably going to work pretty well. I yeah. wonder why Apple Jason, isn't more promoting games because, you know, when we talked about immersive movies, a game is inherently immersive. There is something behind you. There's something in front of you. There's something a first person shooter that, style game. I, World of Warcraft in this be, might be amazing. I think they don't want to be defined by games. I right. think that, that it's Apple too easy is very, to be. Is, 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 it's, yeah, games is going to be something that's going to happen naturally and they're not going to do anything. So why put any gas in that in that uh, tank because it'll fill up on its own. And they, I think that what they want you to see is all the other things that you can do with it, you know, and, and I think that there are a lot of things that, that I'm doing with it, so. Yeah, also, it, also, this is something that Meta can can already do really, really well. So again, why may, why bring that part of the conversation in there? And this is, I think that it's, most of the messaging that Apple has been doing hasn't really been on the basis of, hey, go to your Apple store right now and buy one of these. It's been, hey, our, let's plant this flag inside your consciousness so that in a year from now, two years from now, when we do have something that's a lot more rational for the regular consumer, it won't feel like a revolutionary, brand new, game changing. Oh, I'm taking a big risk. It's like, oh, this has been around for a couple of years and now I can finally afford one. Well, yay. Right. Although, Jason, Jason you bet you. So you bring up uh, pairing Bluetooth. I was surprised to, to, to learn through the developer uh, tech note that it can't work with Bluetooth mouses. It can work with yeah. like the latest Magic Trackpad, not even the older Magic Trackpad. It, but I wonder why that. Well, I, yeah, it's I, the one. It doesn't work with the Magic Trackpad with double uh, battery. A batteries in it. Right. And I think that's because of the method they use to do device pairing and the new devices can be found. Because uh, you can pair them by a lightning, but they also just say, I'm here. And so even if it's connected to something else, another Apple device can see it and say, no, no, I want that and can grab it, which is what you're using when you pair it here. Mice, it's an interesting question. I, they must have just decided that they didn't want to support mice because <laughs> it added a level of complexity when you're jumping from window to window or 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 they felt like there was a geographic thing. Um, it's also possible they just tossed it overboard because they wanted to ship this thing. But yeah, it yeah. is a trackpad only kind of experience. Although I'll, I'll, I will say just using a Bluetooth keyboard with it and then using the gestures, the eye gaze and the gestures, it works pretty well. Like having a trackpad it, when you're under universal control also works really well, though. It's really nice, especially with some of those iPad apps where the touch targets aren't very good. Yeah. Um, to have the little floating circle going around that's your iPad cursor, um, that that is very helpful in navigating those iPad compatible apps, yeah. especially. It, it, it did seem weird. When I read that, I double checked to see, okay, so can't use a trackpad either, but no, can you use track? So it just, it feels like it's a, any, uh, I, I think that you're, I, I agree with your idea that your second idea that maybe it's just something that there is a problem that we can't absolutely 100% lick, whether it's user interface, whether it's, whether it's pairing, let's not even have to solve that right yeah. now. That's something that, hey, that's, congratulations, 11.2. Ray, Ray mentions in our uh, Discord Ray Maxwell's in the Discord. If you connect a Mac to a Mac, the Mac mouse can move to the yeah, Vision Pro screen. Yeah, it's universal control, right? So you can use any input device that's on your Mac. it's an and iPad. It. <laughs> and, and let me tell you, universal control is one of those features that is this classic Apple feature where it comes out and everybody's like, oh, that's really cool. You, yeah. I can use my Mac and my iPad. And now all of a sudden I say to myself, 
Oh, was universal <laughs> control for the Vision Pro all along? Because it's really good. Like literally, you've got your Mac in front of you and a Vision OS app above it. And you just use your Mac's trackpad to move the pointer off the top of the wow. screen. And it just boop, mm. pops into the other app. And you've got the little iPad-like pointer. And yeah, you can use that with whatever is driving your Mac at that point. Yeah. Oh, one, one, th one thing I've 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 to talk to you offline about, but it'll work here though, too. The, there there are two it's problems that exactly. Hey man, uh, there are two problems that a lot of people are br uh, bringing up either on Reddit or, or or the pros who are like reviewing the thing. One is Bloom when you have high contrast edges. Another is like oh boy, uh, I think I think our, one of our mutual mutual friends thing. I thought that was a really great display, and it made me really really happy to go back to my Retina display when I took it off. <laughs> when I took it off my head because of the added detail. So yeah. Bloom and detail. What do you think? About uh, let, let me do detail first. It is a, an incredibly detailed screen, but the fact is that the Mac screen sharing, um, if you put, I mean, bottom line, if you get really close to it, you can, you can have, see the quality of it. But if you put it at the distance that you'd put a studio display at the size that you'd put a studio display, so a retina display, um, you would always prefer to use the real display over the shared display because the quality it's it it's uh it's streaming it it's at 4k resolution coming up as a virtual 5k monitor it's and then it's going to be set in a inside a 4k display it's never going to look as good as that um however that you know so you, the mac display ends up being more for i've got a little i've got a little macbook display and now I've got a giant screen and that's mm. superior. But if you have a big screen, it's not superior to the big screen, I would say for the Mac screen sharing. Um, so that's, yeah. and, and and what was your first? Oh, like uh, blooming. blooming. Yes. I, I, I don't know if Alex has experienced yeah. this, but uh, in, in very dark environments where you have very bright things, like on a screen, I get, I get a uh, lens flare, uh, like, I guess I would say it's, I see reflection. I see reflections yeah. on it's it's reflections on the lens, and it's really yeah. hard to get rid of. Um, it, this is the physics problem of just curved lenses that are there, and they're picking up a little bit of that highlight. And you do notice it in high contrast. So it's it's really like if I'm in a dark environment and I put up and I'm watching a movie and it goes into a movie. daylight, you know, I'll see a little bit of reflection across the bottom. There's a little bit of the other thing is is that the seal on the nose isn't perfect, and so you get a little bit of light coming in from there as well. I've been thinking about like how to fix that to close that off completely, but so there's a little bit of light there that if you can kind of move it around on your nose a little bit, you'll get a little less that you see if it's if it's a light area. Again, this is why I think that eventually a lot of us want rooms or something like in my office because I have a lot of control over it. I can kind of turn it to a point where the tracking works well, but I don't get a lot of bleed. If I go into my living room, I get a, I have a lot of windows, and so there's a there's a lot of there's some light bleed that comes in from the nose, um, and then the um, and to exactly that point, you do get some reflections on the lens. It's not really I wouldn't say it's blooming, but it's reflection on the lens that happens at the bottom from the bright uh, from the. Uh, you know, from br really bright objects on, on a really dark background. Yeah, yeah. and it's well, not the, blooming. It, it, it's definitely oh, like lens reflection. lens reflection. The blue yeah. blooming, like on an iPad Pro, that's got the backlighting that's not quite perfect, so you get a little little bloom around it. That's not it. It's it's more like a lens flare kind of thing where you're getting mm -hmm. a reflection off of the lens that is uh, happening in high. If only I only notice it really when it's like completely black and then a okay. very bright white thing in yeah. the center. Yeah. Do not do you give your the Vision Pro to Jerry Riggs everything. Because <laughs> that Dumbo scratched the Vision Pro intentionally. And uh, here's what Apple Insider's headline says. Unsurprisingly, Apple Vision Pro lenses will scratch if you try to destroy them. No, thank you. Can, can I that's, tell you a story? That's, that's not nice. That's Let me not tell you nice. a story. It's the day that the iPhone comes out. Yep. And we had we sent a bunch of people, including one of our uh, one of our junior editors, Brian Chen, who now is the tech reporter for the New York Times, to wait in line for iPhones. And we got a bunch of iPhones back. And so we had like, all right, you do this with that iPhone. You do this with this iPhone. I'll do this with this iPhone. We're covering it all. And across the way, just in the same space, across the way are the editors of PC World, our, our dear colleagues at PC <laughs> World. And what did they do? The first thing they did, hey, guys, let's drop it oh, until it breaks. so mad. I just but this but this no isn't but this, this isn't quite the same thing. I mean, I'm 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 sort of tensing Isn't for it? oh who's who's no well because people are going to want to know like okay it has this protective sock what happens if like if th things happen like uh, they uh, I think that people want to know aren't going to be scraping a, a knife against the thing and expecting it to to to, to survive. What they want to know is that after six seven eight months of use. 
where again life happens sometimes like you push it up and maybe the the the, the strap your watch band like catches the side of it like how bad is this going to how resistant is this going to be to the normal wear and tear of life is this going to look like it, garbage in six or seven hours right. so i'm not so i'm not i'm not in, i'm not endorsing the a lot of the drop quote drop tests we've seen however i can get a i can get behind people who are doing actual uh, scratch tests where they have the actual like here is the 10 one to 10 scale here is how difficult it is and it turns out that it's, it's not people are people are kind of misreporting this saying oh well look it's plastic it's like well no it's glass but it does have kind of like a screen protector sort of covering over it that is plastic and will like probably scratch out we've uh, given jerry way too much more time than i had intended the moving, fact that apple on. ships it with a soft thing that you put on it yeah i think <laughs> is the strongest suggestion that it scratches <laughs> yeah <laughs> Because I, I mean, they're not giving like, like they're like, oh you, no, we got we got we got to make be, one of those. They wouldn't be giving they wouldn't be giving that away unless they thought. It was. Well, <laughs> no, and also no. it is. No, they're like, oh god, is. we got to stop people coming in, bringing them back because they're scratched. Can we put and a gotta, thing, a cap on the front? Yeah, let's do that. Let's <laughs> I do mean, that. they sell you a case for three hundred dollars or something that really suspends it, and then they give you this too. So you're mm -hmm. like, they give you this one. Yeah. So they're like, no matter what, you should make sure that you put it. You know, you protect that. And and oh. it's one of those things that uh, it's. It is so well, uh, like Apple, this thing just pops on. It, it is does. so well thought out. It is so, like, I, I have to admit that I, when I first put it on, I was like, wow, like that was. All the materials on this thing so much work. say $3,500 product. Yeah, yeah, they really does. do. Yeah. You don't, it is you don't not the like case you, where you buy it for 3500 and then you see all the ways that they cheaped out around the sides. No, no. no. it's. They, I they wish they would sell the, uh, the little demo tray they have at the Apple store, the Ikea demo tray. Now, I'd like that. Especially yeah. if it like a charge it and so forth. This is uh, good news if you want to try the Vision Pro. Apparently, Apple has lots of appointments available. Your local Apple store uh, to try it. So uh, go to your Apple store online and, and it's about see half you, an hour. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you really want to try it, that's a good way to do it. Um, uh, you know, uh, and I think everybody should try it. It'll give you some idea of of what what everybody's talking about. I think I think you can definitely try it. I think that. You have to use it. The to first really twenty get minutes, it. I was kind of like, "Oh, this is interesting." Yeah. It's after ten hours, yeah. twelve hours yeah. that you go, "Oh, I could." It's <laughs> a lot. Yeah. I'm, What's I'm your killer? Yeah, real quickly, because we got to go to break. What's your killer app, go. Alex? Uh, well, so I was going to be making my pick, but I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you, it's Jig Space. Okay, Jig Space stay is tuned. The, is the killer app. That's going to be Alex's but I'll pick. Talk about it. It'll be his yeah. killer app. Andy, what would your killer app be? What would what would what would make you go? God, you know what? I'm going to start saving my pennies. Probably something that allows me to create workspaces for every single project where a, a virtu virtually or really speaking, I've got a workspace set up in my kitchen for how I work inside my kitchen In my office. I can simply say, OK, I am doing research today, so please configure this room the way that I do research. It kind of has that, right? Well, no, but but can I, can I uh, we're asked right now of like on the on the desktop, I can just, you know, swipe left and I've right. got like two different desktops, right. three different desktops. I would like to have that same sort of capability where it's not like these eight far five, whatever fixed window, virtual windows and a mirror of my Mac display. It's like, no, at this point, I'm actually writing. So right. I don't want to have the distraction of a wide BD. I don't want to always have to open and reopen the same apps. That kind of sophistication, which I'm sure is coming because Apple is really, really, really in the past three or four days really really trying to make you make this make the sense that this is not a games machine this is not an entertainment machine this is a computer i'm convinced that apple's certainly going to do it like 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 uh like alex said wwdc is going to be is is going to be a time jason uh what do you think killer app you got one yet or what would it be uh right now i would say that i really like in juno as a vision pro only app that is the youtube client that um was written by the guy christian, christian Selig, Selig, who, yeah. who did the uh who did the reddit client that Apollo. was so great and then yeah. Apollo, killed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it actually confirms so, alex's uh supposition yeah. that if you're a developer hop on because it, and, the first think, uh, apps are going to be the ones that everybody's going to download and yeah. I think Christian said he paid off his headset over the weekend. Yeah. Like it was, yeah, you know, and, like he yeah. sold enough copies. And, and to... YouTube will get there, right? They've said right. now it's on the roadmap. YouTube will get there. But um, in the meantime, Juno is really very thoughtful. I mean, it is a web yeah. view, but he's wired it in in all the ways that you possibly can so that yeah. you get a... I watched uh, Marquez Brownlee's uh, most recent Vision Pro video and... It actually, and I, I said this earlier, but like watching a 2D video, a standard YouTube video in the Vision Pro 
actually, I think, gave me my greatest appreciation for the video quality because I wasn't distracted by 3D or by 24 frames per second frame rate juddering or by the immersive experience. And the, and the immersive experience is great, but like watching just a, it's just a YouTube video yeah. with Marcus <laughs> Brownlee's face as and he's talking. And as I watched it, I thought, oh my God, it looks so good. And yeah. that was actually kind of the best because all the distractions dropped away and that was all inside Juno. So if you're a YouTube fan and you don't want to, I mean, because the, the YouTube experience in Safari is not that great. Um, Juno is really good. And it's, and, and Christian Seelig, like, he has been through so much with all this uh, yeah. BS involving Reddit. I was happy to give him some money, frankly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, Dr. Dew says synth riders. It's Beat Saber for the uh, VP. I like Saber, but you're using your hands. I tried it. Hands. I was. Uh, yeah. I tried it too. I was yeah. baffled by it. Yeah, yeah me too. But I like Beat Saber. <laughs> yeah. uh, I went. I went supernatural, but you know, Meta carefully bought that. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so they, yeah, they're like, mm, we'll take this one off the market. So yeah, yeah. All right, let's take. Uh, also, yeah, go ahead. Okay. No, no. Oh, I was just going to say the other thing about this is that it just shipped, and almost nobody had it beforehand. And right, so I think yeah. the the next wave is going to be there are going to be a lot of developers, and it's not just oh now I hear good things and I want to jump on the bandwagon. Right. A lot of developers, it's like now I have one, and right. and talk, you talk to developers, and some of them are happy to just say sure, whatever. If my app runs in the Vision Pro, that's great. But so many of them, what they say is, I cannot let people run my software on hardware I haven't tested it on. Right. And now we're going to see that. We're going to see people who are actually able to write Vision Pro apps. There will be an interesting second wave that happens now that it's a real product that just couldn't have happened until it shipped. When Rich puts BB Edit on Vision Pro, then maybe <laughs> I'll buy it. Hey, hey, Max Screen Sharing. I was working in BB Edit on the Vision Pro this week. It was uh, great. Amazing. I, Max I, Screen I, Sharing. I have, I have waited my whole life to do grep and regular expressions through <laughs> VR. That's <laughs> This is our moment. It is, is, the, is the text... Clear. I mean, it's not. You're not getting eye fatigue from using editing text on this thing. Oh no, no. It, it's actually. I mean, it's not as good on the Mac as it is using a. Like I was writing my review earlier today, and I was using an iPad app for that uh, because the text is clearer, uh, the scaling is better in the iPad app. But on the, you can absolutely do it even with Mac screen sharing. You can you can do it, and it and and, it and, and if you're doing it natively, I, I I presume there's a Notes app or something like that, right? Oh, sure. Yeah, you can use something like that. Like I said, I, I ended up using an iPad app, which is just as good. And it, it works. I mean, literally, you can scroll and you can tap where you're looking to set the insertion point. Works great with the Bluetooth keyboard. And yeah, if you stare at the cursor and ta and bring your fingers together, you can actually move that cursor somewhere else and let go. It's a little... It feels like it's extra advice. work. That's this what is, arrow keys are for. This is one of the I mean, reasons I didn't, uh, I, I don't use an iPad as my main computer. It's just a, a, little, a hair more difficult. And, and I feel like yeah. it'd be a little bit like that in the VP. Like it's like just a little too difficult. Yeah, I think there are a lot of similarities. Honestly, I, I I can I can predict now that just as we had all those people, and I was sort of one of them, who were like, let's push put this thing all the way to the edge and say, can I do my work on my iPad and just use an iPad? That is totally going to happen with Vision Pro. Yeah, and we're going to have to see. But I think for most people, honestly, I think the killer app on this thing might really be it connects to your Mac because right. it means that you can take a little like MacBook Air and put a big screen up in front of you screen. anywhere yeah. you go. Yeah. And it runs yeah. all the yeah, Mac Max actually would probably be pretty nice in that thing. Come to think of it. I wish uh, it would. It, I think it'll only do one Mac at a time. Which yes. Is yes. One and only one, one and only one screen at a time. Although I, I heard a rumor today that somebody said that Ben Thompson some, said that, that was it. It was Ben Thompson. He'd heard, he'd heard that they're, they're going to do two screens. That, that there are people yeah. inside Apple who have multiple screens. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. It's happening, people. It's happening I, I, again. It's it's following the same the the same runway as right. iPhone. Where right. here's what here's what we can deliver right now. Of course, we're going to have multiple screens eventually. Of course, we're going to have eye tracking of the of, of avatars eventually. <laughs> Maybe we might even let you use a Bluetooth mouse eventually. But we got to make sure that whatever we ship today that is not labeled beta works really really well. Start small, build up from there. Yeah. It's been a it's been a great game plan for Apple forever, and it's going to continue to be. Ed great T in Discord plan. says I use Scrivener to write. On the uh, Vision Pro, and it works great. Vision Mad, <laughs> name checks out, <laughs> says Blink Terminal also works. Uh, so, yeah, and I imagine my Emacs would work just fine on my Mac. Uh, what do you call that when you put your Mac screen on your Vision Pro? Is there, is there a phrase, a term? It's 
virtual projecting. max screen sharing max screen sharing i think is what they call no, it no but that's not that that but okay it's got to be more than that <laughs> I think that that's not actually what they called it. Rick Literally. Williams says he worked, he did some Pixelmator Pro uh, work. That's of course a, a iPad app on it. I think it'd be interesting. Do you think you could do photo editing? Photo, yeah, yeah. It would be yeah. would it be useful for that. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's again, um, it depends on your interface and whether you like, for instance, or some people are going to use a Wacom tablet or want to have a pen or something like that. That stuff isn't that's there, not there yet, but. Yeah. I mean, actually, um, the I iPad is great. I don't see why it could be at some point. A nice combination and, on an iPad. And I've got, Pro. I've got your answer. They call it MVD, the Mac Virtual Display. Okay, that's what they call it. That's MVD. Okay, fine. MVD. 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 We're gonna take a little break. Believe it or not, there is so much Apple news this week. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we will get Finally. to Finally. <laughs> we're just getting started. Now, yeah. now, 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 that, now that the Vision Pro stuff is out of the way, we can finally talk about financials. Yes, let's talk about money, the money, graphs. Money, money, Color money. graphs coming up next. <laughs> A Mac Break Weekly. Right now, I want to talk about croissants. Oh, the best. Wouldn't you love a, a freshly baked croissant every morning out of your oven, delicious and ready to go? I got the answer for you. Wild grain. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by Wild Grain. Wild Grain is the first ever bake from frozen subscription box for sourdough breads, amazing fresh pasta, artisanal pastries. Every item is frozen and it bakes from frozen. You keep it in the freezer, bakes from frozen in 25 minutes or less. You take a, though the cheese bread was so good. Take it out of the freezer. You don't even put it on a pan. You put it in the oven. 20 minutes later, you've got fresh baked Bread, no thawing required. I love it. And by the way, free croissants in every box. And here's my tip for you, my life hack. Don't cook them all at once, although you might be tempted to. Just take one out at a time and you can have a fresh croissant every morning. It is so good. And let me tell you, I do sourdough, and I know how hard it is to do sourdough right. I mean, we're talking 48 hours of raising, all sorts of work. That's what they do. They do it for you, and now you can get it in a box ready to cook in 20 minutes. You can fully customize your wild grain box. You can choose any combination of breads, pastas, and pastries. I loved the pasta. You can even build a box of only breads or your only pasta or only pastries if you want. Plus, for a limited time, you can get $30 off the first box and free croissants in every box when you... Ooh, when you... <laughs> Man, I wonder if I get a box of croissants, just all croissants. Go to wildgrain.com slash MacBreak to start your subscription. They really, these are bakers. These are real bakers who really know what they're doing with a love for baking. And, and while I love to bake, it's really nice. It's really nice to have somebody do all the hard work for me and just pop that in and get fresh baked bread. You heard me. Free croissants in every box. $30 off your first box. Wild Grain. Wild, remember the name, wildgrain.com slash MacBreak. I'm craving one right now. <laughs> All right, let's look at the graphs. The charts are in. Uh, Apple reported a $120 billion yeah. quarter. Pretty good. It's their second best quarter ever. Wow. Um, but their best quarter ever was two years ago. So it's up slightly. Basically, Apple is a huge money-making machine. <laughs> yeah. It's doing okay. Yeah. But if you are an investor and you want to see growth, the question is, where will the growth come from? Yeah, what's from? the because next it's big sort of thing? Right. a very slowly growing, incredibly profitable company. So your stock's going to go up because they're doing stock buybacks and they're going to give you a dividend. Um, but this was okay. I mean, they, they caution the next quarter is going to be down a little bit. This is the iPhone um, quarter. So that's why but, iPhone is 58% of revenue. Yeah, this is it's the normally, new iPhone. It's still around 50, but it is. The new iPhone came out and it sold yeah. pretty well. They were they were a little soft in China, but they said that in most uh, regions, they were, you know, four of the top five or five of the top six or the top five or six in, yeah. in most regions among uh, phones for this, this quarter. Yeah. Uh, the iPad, so the iPad didn't do that well. Uh, if you think about it's year over year, it went down a lot. Um, I look at this chart and say... They didn't release a new iPad the seven, whole year. They sold $7 billion in stale iPads. Yeah. It's actually not bad. There was no new iPad. An iPad all year. The the newest iPad that somebody bought in that quarter was nine or well, like 10 months old. And they still sold $7 Counts billion of, of them. So 
that's pretty good as a like baseline of where the iPad is as a product because there there was nobody who was motivated to buy one because there was a new model. Wait till and the new models still, come out. So right? it was down, but I mean, it might be I, next I have a hard month. Time criticizing that number might be next yeah, month. In fact, and Minchi Quo, in, in, in I hope he's right. In his uh, latest note, says they're not going to be as expensive as others have reported. There have been, you know, I mean, it's with OLED screens and everything. These might be very expensive. He says no, no. There may be a five hundred dollar. What, what, what did he say? Five hundred dollar increase for the OLED? Or no, it wasn't even that much. Anyway, let's hope he's right. iPhone revenue looked very solid. That was the again. It's it's that quarter. Every time you get yeah. your uh, your uh, what is it Q one results? That's the iPhone quarter. That's, yeah, and I always you know, hear people say, "Oh, Apple's." You know, I hear that Apple sales are going down, and it's like, no. No, the, when you get so much financial reporting is about growth because that's what the Wall Street, you know, what that's what investors care about. But right. iPhone sales, they, they had one bigger iPhone quarter, but, you know, iPhone sales of almost 70 billion. It's doing it's doing fine. Services, doing okay. except, for, Service. except, for, except for China. Except for China. Yeah. Yeah. They say they, they, they as a matter of fact, uh, this is the second time uh, that you mentioned, like you, you mentioned that he was saying, oh, it's four is four out of the top five smartphones on XYZ, A double A, double B. I said, and in China, it, we had four of the top six smartphone models in <laughs> urban China. Yeah, like, urban only the China. City. And, and, and remember, this was also up, the quarter that the Chinese government told everybody who works for the Chinese government, which is a lot of people, that they could not use an iPhone. So yeah, but, that but, must but have the also impacted it. But, oh, but also the Q&A reveals that the analysts are really, really concerned about, or excuse me, interested in growth in China because they got a lot of questions and a lot of follow-ups about right. uh, what they're doing in China. One actually, sure. pull, actually pulled out that this is one of the few places, I'm quoting a question here, one of the few, China was one of the few places that was down double digits while everything else was growing. And this is a, a story that's been going on at least for a year. Well, and yeah, beyond, they're down 13% and beyond, year yeah. over year. And just beyond uh, what Chinese uh, citizens are buying, China's got a lot of headwinds. <laughs> like, you know, it's not going to just oh, be yeah, their economy because people are yeah, buying other phones. Tanky. I mean, Evergrande just is is being disassembled for parts. Right. You know, like yeah. that's one of their. You know, so it's there. They have a lot of. There's a lot of things that will probably bring that continue to bring that down over time. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, services huge, uh, and growing twenty three percent now, and that is a steady trend line. Uh, I don't know how much of that comes from Google, but still, it's a. It's you know, mostly it's the App Store. And that's why Apple is defending the App Store so fervently in the uh, EU. Well, I think services also include all of their other, I mean, everything that you pay a subscription for right. at Apple. Yeah. So it does. It does. It does. Of, uh, yeah. it does Plus yeah, Google fees. But I think the Google and and, uh, and App, App Store, store cut keeps, are probably the, the, biggest, the biggest drivers 70%. there. Yeah. But it, keep, it keeps going up. Like, there's no point in, it's not seasonal. I don't even do my little seasonal trend line anymore because, like, it just goes up. Solid. And it's a it's a big part of their business now. Solid. For sure. Now, and is the Vision Pro going to be wasteland. wearables? Is that going to be in it wearables? Is. Yeah. But, but keep in mind that even if they sell every one that they make, which we think that they probably will, that's going to be less than a billion dollars uh, to a line that's already at twelve billion for this quarter, and you know eight point three a couple quarters ago. So, uh, wearables, home and accessories is in the doldrums. It's been down year over year a lot lately. After a real uh, serious rise, they sort of have peaked and are going down a little bit. I I try to explain why this is. I think about it. The best I can come up with is one: the Apple Watch has been pretty static. Uh, there are not not a lot of changes in the Apple Watch product line, especially this year. The AirPods line also fairly static. There have been some updates, but not a lot of them. And then in in home, like the home pods do exist, but again, not really driving a lot of revenue. And and so in wearable home and accessories, you end up with a uh, you know much more respectable number than it ever used to be. But there the growth has disappeared. And if well, I were an analyst, I would probably be asking Apple, what is your strategy? in this category because to grow it because you've obviously done some great work to make it the size it is thanks to airpods and thanks to the apple watch and vision pro might get there but i can't see it really being appreciable for the next few years so is there a new round of airpods is there something that's going to be really exciting for apple watch that's going to drive people are there new products in the home that you're going to do because right now it's just sort of like stalled yeah. well, and, you know, and i think, think this this 
there, there's a, there's something that I that I, I thought about uh, like last last month when Samsung announced that they're or at least previewed their Samsung Ring. I wonder why Apple hasn't considered a, a Ring wearable because that uh, as, especially at CES, a lot of pl- people are getting into that. Not even not just like the 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 ratty sort of like hey here's a ring that's eighty dollars it does nothing. But Ouya is becoming more and more sophisticated. Samsung's getting into it. It seems like something that Apple could do, given that they could price something that is cheaper than the Apple Watch, would would invite into the Apple ecosystem, could use their sensor technology, could use their AI health technology. It seems, and, and also style and fashion, just like the watch. It seems it's, it was the first time that I, I started to wonder why is Apple not getting into this? Because it I'll seems like you such why. a natural fit. Okay. Because uh, I've had an Aura ring for years. It's, they're not accurate. And really? I think Apple is probably working hard on it. I think you're right. It'd be a great product. I'd want, I mean, the, one of the problems with all the rings that are out there, and I've tried them all, is uh, they don't look great uh, because they're, they're plasticky, they're metal, would be would nice, you know, make a good looking ring. Apple could do it. Uh, but I think they're, they're, they've got to they've lick the problem of it being reliably. Uh, the problem, you know, it's, it's your finger. <laughs> and uh, and one would think, I mean, for well, certain I things, think I think the finger is probably better for pulse, but for other things, it's not so great. So I think Apple's probably concerned with that, I would guess. I think that's also what is driving people to buy things. So, so for a lot of us, when we watch the keynote for iPhone for the iPhone, we're just waiting for them to get to the camera. The camera's at the end. We're all waiting to look, <laughs> okay, what's what's new in the camera? Because that's what, that's what I think a vast majority of people make a decision about related to what the, why there's... I mean, all the other stuff is like, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but the people who are buying every year or every other year are, are generally looking at a camera improvement to to make a decision. And there, that doesn't really exist for the Apple TV, for the, I mean, my Apple TV, I finally upgraded it a while ago. I hate the new controller. So I'm just kind of like, uh, you know, it, it it's the, did the same thing it did before. Um, slightly snappier, but I didn't really feel like I, now I have a controller I don't like. Um, and so the, um, so, I, so I went back to the old controller from the old Apple TV with the new Apple TV and then it's fine. Um, and the, and the, the, uh, then the watch, I'm kind of like, it does timers and it tells me the time and I have some things that I can do and it, and the, and I thought that the ultra for me was, I like to hike and r- around. And so I'm mapping things and so on and so forth. And I found that to be fairly useful. Um, but I think that now I now that I have the ultra, when will I buy another, uh, watch three four years yeah, yeah. you know like a, you know at least you know like i don't know it's what like i would one... what they would put in a watch that would get me excited about doing it. maybe glucose like glucose monitoring would probably oh yeah i mean to do it <laughs> oh absolutely yeah. um yeah maybe sleep would be the reason you'd get it but nowadays everybody's got sleep monitoring and yeah. At least I yeah. do. Like, well, Victor- in everything. I, Vic- yeah. But, but also, Victoria's song over The Verge had a nice piece, a roundup about a lot of these things and was making a good point, made a good point that. Uh, rings are really have been really good for her for excuse me in her in her professional estimation rings have been very very good focused on women's health specifically and that's that's an area that gave me pause yeah, okay that's something that's completely not on, on my radar so yeah. I don't know yeah. yeah yeah if you could use them for ovulation and uh, so forth I guess it would be good for temperature I don't know my, I, think, I, I think women are more likely to wear rings than men too yeah. like you know like yeah. I don't think I know you know I don't I, I mean I see I'm auras everywhere, too, but... and you can kind of tell if it's an aura because they want you to wear it on your index finger, uh, or secondly, maybe your middle finger. But they, but that's really not the ring finger. And so, uh, if you see people wearing a shiny ring or a black matte ring on their index finger, that's usually an aura. Uh, anyway, profit twenty thirty three point nine billion dollars. That's in just three months, boys and girls. That's that's yeah. good money. That's why they got all the money. Second That's best why they, quarter. They can afford to, to, you know, build a car if they want or make a Vision Pro happen in 2024. Yeah. Oh, actually, that I'm sorry. The 33.9 was year, year, the entire year. No, that was Q1. That no, was, it was one quarter. Year. Holy yeah, cow. Yeah, one quarter. Holy. The holiday quarter, I'll grant you, which is their most yeah, profitable and biggest still. quarter. But still, Jeez, Louise. they make, they generate an enormous amount of profit and then they buy back stock, which increases the stock price. Right. And they... It's all part of their their plan and their margins. Look at the margin, forty five point nine percent margin. <laughs> yeah, wow. and that includes in there a product margin that's less than that because the services margin is something like seventy five percent or something. Right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, good good uh, quarter for Apple. So uh, and good graphs from six Not colors. Not going to go out of business. Dot com. <laughs> There's the China <laughs> one. Not going exactly. out of business anytime um, soon. No. Yeah, I mean, you don't I have to rush home to cash the check. It's a weird. <laughs> it's a weird time for them because they they. 
This happened a few years ago, and now it's happening again. Where you put up if you're if you're judged by your year over year growth, which Wall Street judges you on. Yeah, and you set like you have a you blow out year, which they did around the pandemic, right? They blew it out because everybody bought new Macs, everybody bought new iPads. The iPhone did a design refresh. People bought new iPhones. Just these huge numbers, and. It, they are going to hold on to most of that growth, right? They're they're mostly like, they're down a little since then, but since last year when they were down a little, now they're kind of flat. And so on one level, that's brilliant because they took the business to a whole new level and most of that stayed. And that means that's why they're so profitable. But the other part of this is growth. And they've got some threats in China and they've sold a lot of iPhones so that that is sort of a saturated market. They also saturated the Mac and the iPad during the pandemic. And so you and, and Vision Pro, while it's now here and will be a growth area for them by, you know, the very definition, because they're starting from nothing, is going to be a slow build. So that is going to be some of the institutional pressure, the, the shareholder pressure on Apple is going to be, where's your next big growth spurt coming from? And I don't know what their answer is going to be. They're apparently growing really well in um in developing countries you know in in the in the countries that are not where they're already saturated obviously there's India's a lot more going to be there, the next big uh, market probably india the, latin Brazil. america is doing really well for yep. them i mean yeah, there, there are they, lots of places where they're doing they, they, very they well called, yeah they called out malaysia mexico the philippines poland and turkey as well december quarter records in india indonesia saudi arabia and chile that was like almost like the second or third paragraph of yeah. these prepared statements but that's going to be a challenge for them because they're in this unique yeah. place where they're one of the world's most valuable companies and one of the world's most profitable companies. And let's face it, one of the world's most powerful companies. Yeah. But their investors are going to be like, it's it's like that thing when we talked about about Facebook not having a, uh, a, a, a usable growth trajectory because they will run out of human beings on planet Earth. Yeah. It's a little like that with Apple, which is they are so successful now that you have to say, well, now what? Right. Like what? Yeah. <laughs> what do you do now? To, because growth is all you. that the investors want. I got another graph. This is from Wired Magazine in the California Department of Motor Vehicles. Did I call it California? California. That was a, that was a Freudian <laughs> slip. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you could be on Fox News tomorrow. <laughs> with like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> California. Uh, the uh, number of miles driven by the Apple car quadrupled in 2023. That is a hockey stick right there. They're driving these autonomous vehicles like crazy. That sounds to me like Apple's taking this uh, very seriously and working hard to get this ready. Even though German said uh, they're not doing level four, they're not even doing level three. They're no. they're aiming at two plus. Um, well, that, that makes me believe they they might actually ship a car, right? Because yeah, it's I attainable agree. in right. a way that the others. Well, why are they and, yeah, driving think, so many autonomous and, miles? And, well, I mean, I think I think they want to have. Uh, you know, as many autonomous features as possible. That's almost table stakes at this point. But you want to talk about, I mean, talk about those charts. You want to talk about a way that you could really goose the revenue is sell some $100,000 cars. Yeah. That would that yeah. would be because a $100,000 car, unlike a $3,500 headset, you don't even need that much volume. And let's face it, Apple would probably have a decent volume. You would, that that's appreciable to the, to the top line, at least if you're selling $100,000 cars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, GM, uh, self-driving, self-driving is really starting to fade out. I mean, GM, I think, uh, I think there was a report actually from GM saying that they believe that they've set themselves back by several years now with their failure in San Francisco with the cruise uh, taxi uh, program. Google is doing, quote, well, unquote, but they're only doing, quote, well, unquote, in the sense that they're showing that it can be done with a lot of support and putting a lot of money into it to make sure that you map every city, specifically city by city, and that's starting to look like technology current technology is saying that uh, de de creating a generic driver app and sensor array that will work wherever you drop it in is nearly a well, pipe dream at this and, point. And I think that, I think that the thing is there's the all or nothing thing like it, you have to be able to go to your house and be able to drive away and, yeah. and find its way there. When the reality is, is most of the time when I want self-driving to work, this gets into people want to take the Google wants to take the driver that they want to take the steering wheel away. Right. And just have it be, you know, nothing there. And and you're just going to, we're going to take you somewhere, which means you have to figure out how to make it work in windy roads and streets and with pedestrians and everything else. Whereas where most of us want this to work is on the highway, like when we're stuck in yeah. traffic, you know? And so if you focused on the highways, if you took the 101 and put the extra sense, you know, the, if the company's paid for 
extra sensors going down the highway and all kinds of extra stuff added to the data and visuals that that help the cars and everything else and just said this only works on the highway a lot of people it would change more people's lives more you know faster <laughs> than than all of yeah. the other than, than dealing with all these pedestrians and all these little things and everything else because it would you know but you need to give it the data and you could do that um, yeah. But when I'm sitting in traffic, that's when I wanted to take over. When I'm driving down the five to LA, that's when I wanted to take over. I don't really need it to take over in the in the streets. Yeah, one hundred percent. Get me on the highway. Get me off the highway. Yeah. Keep me in my lane when there's when there's a, a yeah. lot of traffic. When I want to do a lane change, I will simply tell you at some when it's safe to do a lane change. Please do this lane change and emergency evasion. Like when you're fast, yeah. when, you, when you can work faster than I can. I mean, yeah. that's the I can. I, that's the only. I, I still. It's 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 a, it's a conversation we've been having for years. I still don't know what Apple could really bring to it. If it's particularly if they learn, if they're lending themselves to the level two, which I or two plus, which I think is very, very smart, but a lot of systems are doing that very, very well right now. Yes. Dashboards. Okay. That's kind of cool, but that's not, I don't see how that's really flipping the script and making it valuable enough to say, yes, we're going to create an entire, an entire uh, new division that can else not just put these on the road, but also maintain them can also can sell them can also uh, and i'm not, not saying that's a foolish thing i'm just saying that i'm not at the point right now where i understand where that actually works for apple so we'll find out rare that apple puts out a press release announcing an update to uh, an operating system in this case uh, at least a point update they have to because march is the deadline for the eu's <laughs> digital markets act so they have said by march by next month iOS 17.4, and that will split the App Store and all of those changes. Uh, they're By not happy PM about it. Meantime, on March 6th. Yeah. <laughs> you know. uh, they, they are not happy about it. Uh, they say the EU is making them adopt a less intuitive user experience and new risks, but we're going to do it. Okay, fine. 17.4 will be out in March. Alternative marketplaces, new options. There, new frameworks and APIs for creating alternative marketplaces, new frameworks and APIs for alternative browser engines, uh, and then, it, and I like this, an interoperability request form. You can ask. Sure. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> you, you, you can ask. Yeah. That's uh, that's coming out in uh, in March. Um, oh, here's the OLED story. I, I actually did want to give it more uh, detail. Um uh, for context, a previous report, also from supply chain, said that Apple was targeting a $1,500 starting price for the 11-inch iPad Pro with OLED, $1,800 for the 13-inch. Uh, today's Ming-Chi, or no, it wasn't Ming-Chi quote, it was Digitimes. Maybe that's a little less reliable source, I don't know. Uh, says that the increases will not be as dramatic as previously rumored. According to unnamed sources in the report, both the 11-inch and 13-inch iPad Pro models with OLED will be $160 more expensive. You know, it's it's not unusual that Apple lets speculation go run rampant about pricing and then surprise. I remember this with the original iPad. Surprises everyone with a much more reasonable price. I hope that's the case. I'd pay $160 bucks more for OLED. I sure would. Here's a scary story uh, tweeted from um, uh, Brett Shavers, who uh, fell off a cliff, swam with sharks, dined with hintmen. This is his his ex editor, ex editor, what do you call it? His ex bio. Um, he says, just peer reviewed a forensic analysis in a case. This is scary. The suspect mailed a package with a hidden Apple air tag in it to a victim's old home address. The package was forwarded to her new and formerly safe address. This might be a good time to warn domestic violence victims of unexpected mail. There's a use for air tags. I didn't think about and apple probably didn't either that's yeah sad um i think we are ready to take another break and get your picks of the week far far up if you would we are uh, we're having some fun jason snell andy anako alex Lindsay. our show today brought to you by rocket money if i asked you how many subscriptions you know monthly payouts you have would you be able to list them, and would you know how much it's costing you? I think I would have said, yeah, I know that. I, I could tell you and started enumerating them. But when I started using Rocket Money, and this was a couple of years ago, uh, it blew me away. 
And by the way, it has since saved me hundreds, probably thousands of dollars. Rocket Money is a personal finance app. Does a lot of things. You can monitor your spending, lower your bills, budgeting. It's great for that. But it also <laughs> finds and cancels unwanted subscriptions. I'm not surprised Rocket Money now has more than 5 million users. has saved its members an average of $720 a year with more than $500 million, half a billion dollars in canceled subscriptions. With Rocket Money, you see all your subscriptions in one place. And if you see something you don't want, you can cancel it with a tap. You don't even have to get on the phone with customer service. They do it for you. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. This is this. This little program will save you a bunch. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions. Go to rocketmoney.com slash macbreak. Rocketmoney.com slash macbreak. Uh, even after I canceled all those subscriptions, I keep it running. And it's not at all unusual for me to go, what's that charge? And go and look and have them cancel it. It's great. Rocketmoney.com slash macbreak. Alex Lindsay, do you have a pick of the week? I know you do. You mentioned it. Oh, we also have an empty seat. <laughs> Alex, is, Alex is virtual right now. <laughs> Very virtual. Alex wandered off and first. he can't. That's he, fine. he can't find his settings uh, screen. It's it's gone. It's gone missing. How about I'll start with you, Jason Snell. Yeah, um, I mentioned Juno by Christian Seelig, which is a really great Vision Pro app that uh, people who've got a Vision Pro should uh, buy. It's five dollars. Uh, I think it's worth it. It will give you YouTube as it was meant to be seen until there's a YouTube app whenever that happens. So I think that uh, Christian has done a really good job. It's a, it's a nice app. It is a good Vision Pro-E connection to the YouTube web interface. He did a good job. And then I'll throw in a, a bonus, another thing for Vision Pro, and also a pick here a little more than a year ago by Andy, which is um, Simon, Simon Storfering's uh, RuneStone, which is a really, really, really nice... A uh, text editor that knows a lot of different formats, um, including Markdown, which I write in. And he, even though he's in Denmark and I believe, and has not used Division Pro yet, um, that app is running natively on the Vision Pro as a text editor. Wow. And it looks really good. He did a good job with that. So those are a couple of things to try if you have a Vision Pro. And honestly, RuneStone, uh, worth a download regardless. It's a really nice text editor and he's open sourced it. So I think a lot of other apps are using it as a text editor now, which is also pretty nice. You don't, uh, you wouldn't use the Vision Pro on screen keyboard. No, I, number, Leo, number one accessory for the Vision Pro is a Bluetooth keyboard. Yeah. Is I, mean, I would say like the $99 Apple Magic Keyboard is a good buy Any there. Bluetooth That's keyboard really will work need. though, right? I believe any Bluetooth keyboard Yeah, we tried it with a third-party keyboard. Will work. Yeah, when uh, uh, Micah did our unboxing. He's working on our full review of the Vision Pro, by the way. But there's a great video of his uh, unboxing. And yeah, we just hooked up a regular, you know, lying around Bluetooth keyboard. It worked fine. Yeah, yeah. So that uh, get a Bluetooth keyboard yeah. because the text input options are poor. Yeah. But for more than just a few letters, you don't want to eye type. You don't want to try to mash a screen a keyboard that's not there. That's really <laughs> disturbing. Uh, so something better. Andy also has a Vision Pro pick. <laughs> Only because I thought it was interesting. This is the first uh, already we've seen like a GitHub project to make this Vision Pro do something that Apple didn't intend or approve of or or release. Some people were surprised that uh, the screen sharing you can't on on the Mac. It's all or nothing. It's basically virtualize a, a, a 4K screen. You can't just simply take a Mac a Mac window and turn it into its own like little display. So Sagar Jha on uh, on uh, GitHub has produced something called Ensemble. That is already sophisticated, already mature enough that it's been forced to change its name from MacCast. <laughs> uh, but it is described as a pre-alpha project, quote, really more of a demo at this point. But the project is to, like be able to take individual Mac windows and turn them into separate virtual displays in the Vision Pro. I'm really keen to, I'm following this project, not because I will own a Vision Pro at any point uh, where this will be relevant in the next six to eight months, but because I'm curious to see like how much freedom does do developers have to do something that is not 
technically supposed to be done. I don't I don't I don't think he's jailbreaking anything or anything as sophisticated as that, but I wonder how much freedom there is to do something that is maybe out of the sandbox a little bit. Or excuse me, a lot of the conceptual sandbox a little bit. And also it's a feature that a lot of people are surprised by. I'm not I personally, again, not as a speaking as a non-user, it seems to make sense to keep all of your Mac window desktop environment into one confined space, but I'm keen to see how this turns out. There's your, uh, there's your pick, uh, Andy and Akko. And now I go, oh, we're all, we're all in the virtual world. I go over to <laughs> Andy and Akko. Remember, I'm, I'm the only and one you can you're, trust, you're viewer, all... because I'm the only one that I'll let you see my true face. Yeah, Just exactly. like the Joker at the beginning, at the end of the Tim Burton Batman movie. <laughs> I've removed my makeup. <laughs> what about the bat? <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Alex Lindsay, what's your pick yeah, of the week? So so as I mentioned before, you know, the um, uh, my pick of the week is Jig Space. And I think that because it really points towards something that I think is going to be a very important uh, vertical, which is explaining how objects work or explaining how to do things. I imagine when I look at this, I think more of a Kia and, and actually using all the screws um, than, than, um, and not swearing nearly half, half as much. So if I cut to this, this is, you'll see my messy desk because I'm going to show you what it looks like. So... Um, so if we cut to this, this is what my space looks like. And but all the some of these screens are real, um, and then the other ones are not. Um, anyway, wow. so wow. if I click on this and I say, okay, I'm going to bring in my solenoid, and I'm going to have let's see here. So so what what it's doing is it's bringing this in, and it's a little solenoid joint. I have to do this in a weird. The one the problem with it is that's the problem with the battery. <laughs> I just dropped my battery too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, one thing, the one thing that's the one thing that I, I I will say that's problematic with it is it always wants to go on the floor, like it always wants to attach the floor. It doesn't want to do it anyway. So here it is. Let me oh, let me cut, let me cut to this. So here it is. So this is an object, and if I I take my hands and I I can move it up. Oh, that's and cool. I can rotate and I can rotate it around like this. Yeah. So that's that's fine. Except that it's got these little it's got these little. Um, if you look up to what I'm looking at here, I can say okay, go to the next step. So now it has, okay, now it's going to flip and it's going to show me, uh, I click on it again, you can see, take these screws out. This is how to disassemble and fix this. Um, I, it pops back open and I can pop it open. So now I see all the innards. And oh, by the way, if I'm confused, I can grab onto one of these things and just kind of pick it up and move it, set it over there. Um, I can grab, you know, some of this, get that out of the way, you know, move these over. So if I want to look at something, I can just kind of look at it here. Uh, in the way that I have it here. Now, if I go to the next step, it's going to automatically fix that. Um, let's see here. I have now put into a... Oh, it, it asked me if I want to do collaboration. No, I don't want to do collaboration. All right, so <laughs> I don't want to collaborate with anybody. All right, um, so now I go <laughs> to... That's my Vision Pro. Story yeah, of my life. Me. I want um, to so see anyway, myself so, away. But here's the here's some of the cool. It's eventually going to have collaboration, and what you what you have here is now as I as I look at this here. What here's one of the cool things is uh, it has this annotation, and so when I annotate, it took me a second to get get my head around it. I can go take a look at this. Is right? that your hand? That's, that's the, my hand. The representation. No, I'm my of hand. Your hand. Yeah, that, yeah, that's my hand. It's not a yeah. representation. It's, it's my hand. Oh, it's your hand. Um, okay. And. So I can sit there and circle this and say, hey, there's going to be stuff coming out of here, you know, and put an arrow up here. Now, what's interesting is that's in 3D. Like, you see that that mark? Like, I am annotating something in a 3D model um, that's there, right? Yeah. So I can circle things like this, and it's actually going around it. So you can see that the occlusion there, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's there, right? And so, um, did I, am I saying Yeah, I lost still? your video. I lost my video. Um, <laughs> Your video fell on oh, the floor. Something. Yeah, exactly. It's in the garage. Uh, me... <laughs> <laughs> See here, let me turn this on. Oh, it's interesting. In the meantime, um, Jason, can, can oh, you, like, you open, know what I did? Open your... Go ahead. I hit. Um, no, no, I'm sh... Hold on, let me. Did. Let me read. 
troubleshooting live on the air. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's this it's is the, the tech yeah, guy, <laughs> sir. Turn your radio stop. down. Turn your. <laughs> it's it's, it's like down. we're really. It's like we really are in a completely yeah. inky black and So void. what's interesting is it's not the headset that went that went sideways. It was the Apple TV delivery to the switcher. So I'm not sure exactly what happened there. So anyway, so we'll have to figure that out. Anyway, but the point is, is that it it is a, um, it allows you to. Uh, it allows you to really look at step by step how to get something done, break something out. If anyone's ever tried to put together again a lot of these desks that you get from IKEA or the or the you know or, or desks you get on Amazon or many many other things, or just try to fix something, it's very intricate and you can set it up. And what's what's interesting about Jigspace is what they did is they said bring in your three D model. And uh, you can build the step by steps in there, so everything's rotating around. So you just, I think, of the construction of it—that's been the big problem. We've always been able to build the models, but how do we build tutorials on how to use those models and and do it in an intelligent way? And they seem to be the furthest along of all the ones that I've seen so far. And we have been talking about this for thirty years. Like, how do you train people with three D and and interactive and everything else? And it is um, Jigspace is the further, and they've been around for a while. This isn't like they already had an app that did this. It just now works in vision. And, um, and so I think that it's the most impressive one that I've, that I've seen so far in this area. And I think that we're going to see a lot of people building things about how to, you know, fix things, how to change your filters, how to work on your engines, how to, like, as this model gets bigger, I mean, right now it's going to be tiny and so it'll be probably high end tools and so on and so forth. But I think it's going to become a pretty big, uh, pretty big yeah. market. That's why the thirty five hundred dollar price didn't really throw me when it was first announced because that's that's I mean as you know that's what like people who are buying these for industrial uses for yeah. tr for industrial training for assembly line training for assembly product training they won't even blink at thirty five hundred bucks. Well, and, and I think I do think you're going to end get, up. It's with, get, and you're right. It's going to get better for like IKEA stuff. And I think that IKEA eventually will release a product. IKEA or Home Depot or all of them will release products that have most of these things. You know, it's th these are 3D yeah. animations of how these all, they already have all the models. Like they have a CAD model of everything that they have. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's just a matter of putting them into the, into the environment and make, you know, creating it. And I think that uh, one thing I haven't done yet, with the, which I think will come up is, you know, you'll see this in Amazon probably built in. Amazon already has these previews that you can do with their phone. I imagine that that'll be something that we can do pretty quickly with this. And, and again, this type of thing where I'm going to show you how the product works. I'm going to show you how to put together the product. I'm going to show you how to fix the product. Um, these are all things that I think are going to be a big. Oh yeah, Sotheby's already has like on high, on all their auctions. Like in addition to here's a high super high resolution ver uh, uh, scan of the painting, you can zoom all the way in on. But also here is like a view of. Uh, we digitally created like here's what it looks like on a wall with people standing in standing in front of it looking at it so you get an idea of what the presence of it is in a yeah. room and uh, for thirty five hundred dollar very exclusive piece of hardware how uh, how long do we have to wait before they're going to say by the way if you want to hang it in your room uh, yeah. in, in the space where you want to put it and it will it will reflect the lighting in the room and all and everything like that i've got well, and they, they got and there's some going. wayfair and a couple others have some stuff that they've started that way they just haven't been very successful at like it it's dorky you know like yeah. right now it's not it hasn't made it to that to that level yet but it's um i think by the way if someone wants to know what the technical issue was i'm pretty sure that I moved my Apple TV just a little bit and knocked the HDMI cable out. <laughs> That's a <laughs> highly <laughs> technical problem. I'm very, glad you. Very technical. Too, to too many air molecules that. between the connector and the receptacle. Yes, yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Uh, I know you're around here somewhere. Over here, Leo. Over here. We're over here. <laughs> open, open, open the break room fridge. I think you left the Zoom inside the fridge. <laughs> Where did I put my settings? All right. There they are. I'm going to put them over here. Put them over there. They're out of the way. Out of sight, out of mind. Uh, wow. That was a lot of fun, you guys. Um, we probably should wrap this up, though, before that splitting headache I'm getting goes any worse. <laughs> well, it is Micah's, right? He's got a very big head. Is it tilted? It looks like it's it's tilted, too. Anyway, uh, thank you, Jason Snell, SixColors.com. You and Mike Hurley and your Upgrade podcast discover how to leap through or over the uncanny valley. You might want to... Did Mike get one, too? He did. He flew to New York City to get one. Wow. Uh, in fact, because he's wow. that committed to the cause of podcasting. What a man. Good for him. Yes. Yeah, so uh, we broke it down. That was a fun... 
Any Fun anything else uh, you want to talk about? How do you scroll up, by the way, or scroll down? I'm I'm looking at my settings menu, and I can't. Pinch and move. I'm trying to airplay this. What do you do? Pin you just pinch and pinch and then move that pinch. pinch up and oh. Down. oh, oh, look, there it is. Is that remote devices? Is that airplay? No, that's pairing oh, with you the go, Mac. You, you look, you look mm. up to the top, see the little firefly arrow thing. Oh, and tap you look. On up, that. I should close this and look up to the and then, top and see the firefly. Yeah. Why are we shouting? And then, and then you tap on Control Center. <laughs> I'm like that old guy. <laughs> how do you do this? Oh, there's the firefly. You, Is it on it? Channel Three? It's Cleo, on channel, <laughs> turn it to turn Channel it Three. To channel. Okay, forget it. I was. I was going to airplay my view I, so you can see what I'm seeing. Do am I the only see? one who keeps thinking about all the times that Steve Jobs and other Apple, like, and trying to and, try, and trying to argue against like Windows with touchscreen? Like people, people don't want to lift work while like raising up their hands. No, they they never want to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Well, maybe Steve's right. I well, don't want to do it. The funny thing is, is that you'll you'll start doing it with with your hand up here, but you realize that yeah, you, it's you just you your, eyes, your hand so you really. Like every time you, uh, I, I do it so you can see me doing it for the show, but I just have my hand on my desk all the time and I'm yeah. just tapping things because it's your eyes that are driving everything. So it's, it feels like it's a mouse, isn't it? Our tap is always yeah. a click, moving the moving the period is always so a So where, where is right. the control yeah. center, Jason? Uh, you look up, <laughs> you look up and bring down the little thing that, that you tap on. And then one of those three, four icons that shows up in the floater is control center. What little thing that you... You look up... <laughs> And a, oh, and a little up. magic, uh, a little magic thing. Appears, oh, appears you're there. right. Oh, there's a little mat. Oh, but I can't get it to and stay you there. Tap on that. I can't. It won't. <laughs> st it won't stay there. Okay, look at it. Oh, no, I just I don't have to actually touch it. No, you have to tap on it with the, the two fingers together. Yeah. Oh, I got it. Now I'm gonna do airplay. Airplay. Is it the little mountains? No, you want you want the uh, the little two screens. Two screens. I don't see that thing. Oh, Where's the two no, screens? No, you want you want control center. The the third of the four is control center. The third. Oh, there. Oh, the I little, see. So, oh, don't touch that. Tap on control center. <laughs> There's control center, and now okay. I touch the screens. Oh, I can just the look at them, screens. and I can touch it. I can have my hand yep. anywhere. Yes. Problem is, it doesn't. It's getting it. It's, you know, it's because it's not doing the eye tracking because it's not mine. That, and that's that's your mirror my view. And yeah. Which one should a, I go to? Airplay Evelina, outlet. Airplay One or Airplay Two? Martha. Airplay One. Martha. <laughs> it's Sharon! happening again. Sharon. Oh my God. Hey, we did it. <laughs> we did it together. I feel uh, like in the movie, like this, like, I feel like this is like the movie Inception, and like you three are in the dreamscape, and I'm the one who's left behind to anchor the reality to make sure we can pull you all out. Martha, just in case. is the top still spinning? Well, Martha, is, uh, it, all right. Well, and how do I get rid of that thing? I just take it and put it somewhere, right? Just leave it, just leave it. <laughs> or just press your press the digital crown, and it goes away. Oh, it goes away. Okay. Yeah, that's the launcher. Oh, look at that. Hey, there's Jason Snell. Thank you, Jason. SixColors.com. Thank you, Leo. Hey, Andy, when are you going to be on WGBH next? <laughs> Not this week, but the week after next. So go on 1230 on Thursday, go to WGBHnews.org. <laughs> Sorry, do I, have to, do, I have to, do I have to go? If I, if I want you to think I'm an avatar, do I have to like go, go like this yeah. and you can't see? like? Yeah, there you go. Just the sides. There you go. Block the sides. Alex Lindsay, OfficeHours.Global. Is there a special Vision Pro content uh, on yeah, Office we, Hours? We just we we spent this morning talking about it in detail. So yeah, a I bunch of us might. were talking about it, and and so the whole there's a if you if this wasn't enough, if, right. if you haven't if you're not sick of it, there's a whole other discussion that we had. Awesome uh, today, yeah. OfficeHours.Global, and of course, if you want to hire this guy, uh, see there. Oh, there's my hand. Hey, hey, hand. If you <laughs> have you ever really looked at your hand in virtual reality? Wow, man, dude. <laughs> So those are my real hands. Those yep. are your real hands. Okay. <laughs> Is this reality? Hey, I see you guys. I see Johnny oh my and God. Sally. I see Punter Joe. I see Uncle Brett. Hi, Uncle Brett. I see Denmos <laughs> and Micah and Anthony and Dan. Hi, everybody. I see you. Perfect I thank acknowledged. you. Acknowledged. For... <laughs> the magic mirror. 
I want to <laughs> change is... my answer. This is this is exactly like when I was in college and I was the only one who was like in the room who was not drunk high or on mushrooms. It's like helping me. Oh, wow, look, I see my hands. Like, I that see microphone Jason. is. Whoa. <laughs> like, yes, yes, Whoa. you do. You're, remember, you're, 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 don't panic. Whoa. You're a living organism on, the, on this planet. <laughs> Try to put your hand on something that feels real to you, and that will help you understand what is the... (laughs) (laughs) Thank you all for joining us. We do Mac Break Weekly, 11 a.m. Pacific on Tuesdays. That's 2 p.m. Eastern, 5... No, that's 2 p.m. Eastern, and it is 1900 UTC. There we go. It's hard to do math with this on. I don't know if you've noticed that, guys. (laughs) Uh, We, uh, You can watch us do it live. We stream it live on YouTube when the show starts at... YouTube.com slash twit uh, or after the fact, find it at twit.tv slash MBW uh, on YouTube uh, on the Mac break weekly channel. And of course you can subscribe. Is there a podcast um, thing in here? Somewhere? No, no, no. Oh, look my hands. Thanks for joining Those us. Are your hands. Now it's time to strap on the vision pro and get back to work <laughs> because break time is over. Bye. Bye. Hey there, Scott Wilkinson here. In case you hadn't heard, Home Theater Geeks is back. Each week, I bring you the latest audio video news, tips and tricks to get the most out of your AV system, product reviews, and more. You can enjoy Home Theater Geeks only if you're a member of Club Twip, which costs seven bucks a month. Or you can subscribe to Home Theater Geeks by itself for only $2.99 a month. I hope you'll join me for a weekly dose of home theater geekitude.